cups are. Are you sure? But, no, I was just worried that you guys didn't have the cups. Like, I think there's cups. But my water is in this one, mm. so. But whenever I am in the chair, I like for the, everyone else to have the cup. We're, we're, we're good is cup it, Is it a comic show or a cup show? It's cups. It's cups. Oh. cups. Drinking out of cups. Cup, yep. cup. cup show. The, the, the first time I had two cups on the table, the chat was like, well, is Mackie drinking two drinks? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I like my beverages. We yeah. are a multi-beverage kind of show. I would, I would drink four drinks if, if producer Liz wouldn't kill me for it. I mean, I got, I got four. Is that an option, Liz? <laughs> Liz looks real sad. That was she not a happy Liz. In shame, as we all knew she would. Hi, everyone. Welcome ah. to the Thursday Club. Uh, we're, we're on. We're on. <laughs> we're, on Twitch. we're on Twitch every every Wednesday night. You're watching us now. We're also on Alpha. ProjectAlpha.com. That's Matt. I'm Amy. This is Talison. And oh, today yeah. we have a special guest. We're talking Deadpool today. Mm. I have been twitchy and ready and excited. If you say the word Deadpool in a mirror four times, uh, Koi just appears in your house. It's, it's true. weird. Yeah. Thing. I, the weirdest you know, thing. It's uncomfortable for me too because I usually don't know how to get out. And yeah. Don't. But, but you, you, I it's not like you're not you, busy. You, you go, yeah. you go yeah. through the fridge. All the time. You cook something nice. It's really it's yeah. pretty pleasant. I usually shape it in some sort of chimichanga fashion. Even if they don't have Mexican food, I make it happen. No, it's like I have a vegetable chimichanga in my house. It's just vegetables. It's very weird. <laughs> Weeks ago, I did that. We talked about this. You're not supposed to bring it up, man. Good God. <laughs> so, background. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> That's a Deadpool. So, Koi and I used to do a show together called Marvel Movie News. It's on the After Buzz Popcorn Talk Network. Uh, and uh, I, though I created it, you took it over within a year uh, or, like, joined with me uh, for a year. And then we did it together for two years. Yeah. And then... I left to come work at Geek and Sundry full time, but you and our, our other lovely guest, Marquia McCarty, she's been on. Mm -hmm. I just hit episode 150. Woo! I, I've been Congratulations! On. I've been on 150 episodes Whoa. of that show. It's yeah, crazy. I left. I left. I think at episode 155. I want to mm -hmm. say I did 155 episodes almost in a row. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun Every show. Tuesday. Oh my God, I love that show. I, I really miss doing it. Um, but, uh, so, but but it was great to be I, different corners of the internet. Like we had, you had the the deep cut, weird, mythological with an edge of magic corner, and you knew stuff that I was like, uh, uh, I knew a celestial, sure? but I didn't know about the celestial's haircut change. <laughs> and then I was the guy that was like, okay, so people think that pop culture this is this, but like Spider Man and Deadpool are much deeper than people think they are. Yeah. So we'd have this amazing banter of like, but 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 and poor guests would just go like, I uh, once saw uh, Storm as Halle Berry. And <laughs> She I seemed well. quietly in the corner for a couple of episodes of that show. Well, you did the very beginning, yeah. yeah. He was there a lot when I wasn't there. You were often the guy that, like. Yeah, I would, I would pitch in for, yeah, we went. So we, like, actually never. And then I knew you through, like, shopping. Because I love uh, your store so Actual very much. Actual buying of comics. Yeah, up in tangible copies. Buy them. Been <laughs> yeah, no, I only knew you through random social stuff. Like, we, we you know, we, like, like, what is it when you, like, have a list of things that you're supposed to do to humiliate yourself around the city? And then... Bucket <laughs> list? What? A bucket scavenger list? Hunt? Scavenger hunt. hunt. Thank you. Both. I mean, depends on the city. Yeah, I think we, we I think we made another, like, a, I think Chloe's look, birthday. Chloe Dykstra's scavenger. Well, Chloe and I have the same birthday. Yeah. So we, yeah. like, burrowed out. Yeah, Chloe and I, I'm 12 minutes older than Chloe Dykstra. <laughs> so, like, we have the exact same birthday. I, I feel all that maturity, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. We all met very, very Love mature ways. Uh, and, and fun fact about uh, the Marvel show, uh, Chief, our engineer here, our TD, was our TD on that show. Oh, mm -hmm. Voice of Doom. Doom is Chief. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we called him Doom on our show. He's Chief here. Got it. All right. That, I a, would not have gotten got the translation. There's got a whole a, wall there. a promotion. All right. From Doom to Chief. Or is that a demotion? I think no, maybe it's Chief Doom. Doom's note. Chief it was me. <laughs> yeah, when, whenever we first started doing it here, I was like, Chief Doom. <laughs> Congrats on your promotion. Curse you, Key. Curse you, Key. Uh, so before we start and get into the devil mm. stuff, I want to, can I show you guys my latest? <laughs> my latest and greatest. All right, so I my birthday is in October, mm -hmm. and my mom and dad gave me an eBay gift card. Cool. And I didn't fully understand. I was like, I, like I shop on Amazon. You were like, what's really an eBay? eBay? Too much. I don't understand why they got me an eBay card. My mom was like, well, because you've talked about how you buy like vintage comic books off of eBay, so we thought we would help you buy a new comic book off of eBay. And I was like, Aww. oh my god, that's the best. So. Then, then, then Brittany and I were moving some stuff around, and I misplaced that card for about a couple months. And then finally found it a couple months ago, brought it into the office with me, and finally had the wherewithal Surprise, to sit down, money. Look, eBay time. Do, do my research. And uh, my mom and dad don't even know what they bought me for my birthday. They might be in chat. I don't know. But I think you guys will immediately know what this is. Whoa! Huh? Oh. Huh? Uh -oh. 
Okay, thank you, thank you, mom and dad, who I know are watching in Texas right now. Uh, so That's I, amazing! Holy cow! So I love like uh, handsome John Romita Senior Peter Parker and Jonah oh, next yeah. to us Marvel. Like that is. And that, so, that Mary Jane just jumps off of any surface she's on. Yeah. So and hey, there's a scorpion. Here's That's here's so what we're gonna do. Uh oh. <gasps> yes. I'm, I'm gonna not touch it. Lick you it. Know, you know you know my rules. Like I I'll open this for you guys and Pull I'll the open tape it. Off. Yeah, no, no, please. Please. Brittany. Brittany. You got it. That's, you gotta do that. That's it. You you guys and Brittany. Otherwise, this thing stays shut. I'm afraid. Bring it. So. There's so many liquids. I know. <laughs> we just talked about all our beverages. I'm just so. Go. Oh. oh. All right. So. Context, everybody. Jonah. Carol Danvers, uh, who goes on to become Captain Marvel, oh. uh, uh, with <gasps> Kelly Sue DeConnick. Thanks, mom and dad. Thanks, Sorry. Chief. Uh, Kelly, Sud uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick took over Captain Marvel, uh, late 2000s, uh, 2012. Carol Kors, all that, 2012. Uh, and then, uh, but before that, she was Carol Danvers and she fought with uh, Marvel, the original Captain Marvel, uh, until he saved her from a blast of the uh, Psyche Magnetron. Uh, and she was, a, like, her, DNA, her human DNA was fused with his Kree DNA, and she went on to become Ms. Marvel, later Captain Marvel. Uh, she was Captain, or she was Carol Danvers first. This is the first time she's ever Ms. Marvel, is in this comic. Because even in the comic where she was hit by the blast of the, from the Psyche Magnetron, she didn't have powers. She just kind of disappeared from the Captain Marvel universe and reappeared in this one. Did you notice there is a, essentially a lovely wife credit in this book? Is there really? I haven't. Conceived, written, and edited by Jerry Conway, asterisk, asterisk with more than a little aid and abetment from Carla Conway. Oh. Carla Conway, what role did you have mm. in This Woman, This Warrior? Art and storytelling by John Buscema. <laughs> uh, oh, came out the month I was born. It's amazing. Uh, 1970, yeah. January 1977. Did you just repeat that? No, they, it's, it's, that? it's on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, on uh, the internet. <laughs> FYI, I haven't even looked through that yet. Like, no one I, believed I, it. Well, no, 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 so no. Your comic, Matt. no. No, here, here. I'll I want take it. to share. <laughs> part, of the, part of the gift is uh, that I get to you're, share. I know you're too pure to do this. I, I'm and, and, and this is. So this is oh. join the Dinky Starfleet. Yeah, no Dinky Toys. That's a, oh, I love it. I love I've ads. Seen that one before. Oh. Classic ads are really uh, the backs of comics through the oh, years. Man. I, I don't even. I'm not gonna lie. I don't open my Silver Age books. You're a brave man. I look at the back as I slide it into a new bag and board, and there <laughs> no, but it that's sits. My role. That's read my role. your books. I read them in digital. Uh, I, I buy I them. To, oh, them oh, 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 oh! I need. I, have, a, I need a photo of this. Okay, I, I want to look this up later. I have rule. Uh, before Wednesday Club, my rule was: I get a comic, mm -hmm. I'll 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 open it for Brittany, mm -hmm. and if Mercer or Jack Conway begs me, I'll open it for them. But yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. Brittany's the only. Notice that I I do not one. make that list. Uh, and then Until and then <laughs> no, but then Wednesday Club happens, and I was like, all right, I need to make exceptions to my rules for the Wednesday Club. I so now it. it's now it's Britney and now it's Wednesday Club. So, do you know my weird thing? I don't know if you know my weird thing. About I, I don't know that I know your weird. Okay, thing. Okay, so I collect Spider-Man, as yeah. you know, and I today got five issues I needed. I've never found five in one place. Today I got five. No, you've got you've got almost every single run. I I do of every, every issue like, of X-Men and Spider-Man. Like, uh, uh, X-Men also? Yeah, I'm only 109 from every X-Men, every title, every print, every miniseries. <sighs> wow. So, yeah. uh, no, Koi's a Koi's a big time collector. Like his. So his, currently, his I'm at 49, <laughs> and I haven't taken away six. So I have 43 Spider-Man in every Spider-Man in history, every spectacular, yeah. web of, sensational, every title. I only need 43 and amazing, and that includes annuals. I got five today at House of Secrets, but what I do is I don't read them until I own them, and then I get the digital copy and read it that way. So I've got tons of unread digital comics that I'm not allowed to touch until I own the print copy because I'm a weirdo. That so is really weird. Once there are, it's in the long there box, are issues of Spider-Man you haven't, I haven't read. Just read. Yeah. You don't own. I don't own them. Oh, you're so, a terrible man. I have a long box, and once it's in the long box, then I'm allowed to go Earth. click and read them because I bought those I'm discs. You're terrible. Do you remember those discs of every yeah. comic? Yeah. I've unread them. They're just sitting there. So I've, it's a weird like OCD thing. You're a weird. So there's 43 weird. comics I haven't read. Weird. So, uh, do it, do Tonight I can read five. <laughs> <laughs> I got a beautiful number. The digital 70. versions. Uh, do they include ads and letter oh, pages yeah. and everything? Okay. It's, a, it's an exact representation of the original comic. They sold <gasps> these discs in '93. That had everything. That yeah. One of my favorite fruit pie ads is in the back of this. <laughs> it's the Incredible Hulk and versus the Green Thumb. 
Only at Wednesday Club would that uh, sentence make sense. A criminal gang of plants that loves juicy, uh, juicy hostess fruit pies? What next? Next, Hulk go find peace in city far away from green things. <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, my God. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, So, yeah, Mom and Dad, thank you for the gift. That's very nice. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah. uh, very thoughtful. Um, uh, okay, look, look at the joy you brought all of us. Uh, all right, let's, uh, speaking of Spider-Man, uh, you, you fools, let's get into uh, Deadpool. <laughs> There's kind of a segue there. Yep. They are often referenced at one another, so, and Deadpool loves Spider-Man more than most. I am excited for this episode in part because uh, my feelings about Deadpool have changed a lot over the years. Yes. I but agree. I <laughs> came for... <laughs> uh, uh, not... For the better, yeah. And I feel bad, like, I... I that I was at a certain point distinctly not a Deadpool fan is not a dig against anybody who has always loved him. Um, but he hasn't always seemed like he was for me. Uh, and, and there were things that I loved and things that I loved less. And, like, we are living in kind of a beautiful age of Deadpool where most of the things I see <laughs> right now reflect the stuff that I enjoy about him. Um, so I'm very excited with that caveat to get into this. Who's Deadpool? To me... Deadpool is the only character that wears a mask to protect others and not himself. To me, Deadpool yeah. is a character who is the most heart-on-his-sleeve character in the Marvel Universe. And to me, Deadpool is the only character that uses humor as a defense mechanism, not about his own comfort. It's about making other people more comfortable. Deadpool is a merc with a mouth with a heart of gold. Like, Deadpool is like a, a character that no one else, I think, could come up with because it's taken ten writers to get right. Mm. It's taken a lot of evolution to get it's to the character where he is huge evolution. Yeah. The character started as, like, uh, everyone knows the, uh, a rip-off of a DC character. Not everyone knows. Okay. Uh, no. Deadpool is a Marvel superhero. <laughs> He's a Marvel Segway. superhero named Wade Wilson. He's called the Merc with the Mouth because he was a fast-talking, do-anything mercenary type. Do you see why I like him? <laughs> <laughs> you essentially, like, yeah, you're essentially Deadpool. I, and I played, we did a Rocky Horror production, and when I got, I was cast as the narrator, and I got the, the script. Oh, the hips, Hipster Show. Yeah, the Rocky Horror Hipster I Show. Rocky and I got the script, and I, for two weeks, couldn't figure out how to play him because he's a British guy, very stuffy, very, like, blah, blah, blah. And then I realized if I made him Deadpool, oh, good God. So every reference, every callback, think about the play. It's all about meta and self-awareness. So I broke the fourth wall as the narrator, as Deadpool, and we've had actual cast members good, good. from the touring thing say it was the best good, show. Good, good ad for the Rocky Horror Hipster Show, by, by the, way. the way. in October, the Rocky Horror Hipster Show. Is it but coming no, back? It, yeah, we're coming back for a fourth oh. year. Yes! We've returned. No, we retired last sure. year, and we okay. come back. She never up. gives up. So yeah. I, I, have, I have a quote that I want to read through. Mm -hmm. This is from uh, Fabian uh, Nicienza. 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 Co-creator. Mm -hmm. Co-create so uh, Rob Liefeld, uh, Mr. Mr. Pouch himself. <laughs> uh, Rob Liefeld is a comic book artist and writer who became uh, stratospherically popular in the late '80s, early '90s, sort of out of nowhere as the forefront of kind of a a, a new generation, like a divisive one, but a tremendously popular one. Um, he sort of instantly became a superstar, uh, drawing the the latter parts of New Mutants, and then created X Force. Um, which was a part of that booming early 90s era of sales records, uh, departed ultimately with a bunch of other artists to create Image Comics, where he created uh, Youngblood mm -hmm. and a bunch of other stuff, and has worked on and off. Uh, but one of the things he was responsible for was a character in the pages of New Mutants and then X-Force and then eventually his own books uh, called Deadpool. Okay. And if you look at Deadpool 2, it is Deadpool, Cable, Domino, and those are all him. Like, he, he created that corner of Marvel. Yeah. And I found out today for the first time that the Deadpool uh, timing was X-Men had only had a Wolverine toy in Secret Wars. They didn't even have their own line yet. Mm -hmm. The first line of X-Men toys was in, like, 91. The second line of X-Men toys ever was X-Force. So Rob Liefeld was so instrumental, he was the second ever mutants in tangible plastic. It wow. was that big of a pop. Um, I, I so own them all. You the quote. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Aww. So, so, uh, so Rob Liefeld and Fabian uh, Nicienza create a character named Deadpool uh, in New Mutants 98. Uh, was that also the same issue? Was that, was Cable, was that also Cable's first issue? Cable gets there in 94, I think. Yeah, Cable had been yeah. around, but not like as the form he is it was, now. It was, was, was Domino's first issue. He was, yeah, was a Domino's baby first. in X-Men 201. Uh, yeah. He arrives as an adult, I think, in New Mutants 94. And gotcha. he was known as Nathan Summers, but they hadn't, like, tied all of that together. Tied it really all together. Until Cable, then. we'll need to do an episode on convoluted time-traveling characters at some point. <laughs> and unpack. Strife. 
Yeah, strike oh. the cable. <laughs> Executioner song. Oof. Nathan Summers, the Nathan, other one, uh, X-Men. Uh, Na I love oh, X-Men. Nate Summers and Nathan Summers. Nate X-Men. Yeah, Nate oh, Gray. Nate Gray. Nate Gray. Uh, I love X-Men. Steven Scrooge, that art was. That, and like the whole spiral universe thing, I was so, I, I So I learned a lot of this doing my research for a key <laughs> question, mm -hmm. uh, which was very extensive research. Which you research. should watch. Which you oh, should no. watch. The very first episode covers Deadpool. Um, and going back to what you said, I've never, like, since I was a kid, like, when I first saw Deadpool, I was like, he's awesome. He's got blood on his sword. Uh, but, like, and that was like, I was like, yeah. Uh, but, you um, and a lot of people. Yeah, but then, like, I, <laughs> I grew up and was like, I'm, I'm okay with, I'm okay. I don't need a, well, I don't need Deadpool. Like, I'm fine with Deadpool. The cosplayers kind of annoy me at conventions. Like, I, I'm good. It, it, I'm it good. was, it, it was, it felt like, because I was not a big Deadpool fan fan either but I'd, I'd read the new mutants and he'd shown up and i thought he'd been cool you know for for yeah he's that fight. fun but, but it, was, it was very much like what a wonderful distillation of of like and, and this is so true of a lot of rob's work of 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 the uh, deadpool was was really like such a wonderful product of of the unchained 12 year old boy id mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. just let loose to make the coolest red ninja ever <laughs> with yeah. swords and guns and he's super smart uh, but like not in a smart way, but in a cool way. Like like he, he is a <laughs> dog with shades on his feet. I said that he was like he was very easy to draw. That was a, a that was that was the draw for him. Deadpool. That was the draw. I, I, I see that. Uh, I I remember uh, there was there. I, I wish I could remember the quote or, or have uh, found it. I, I I looked for it and couldn't find it. But there was something about how Rob Liefeld was jealous of like not Spawn, but like he was. He was trying. He loved Spider-Man, but wanted to find a more simple way to draw Spider-Man without all the. Oh, webs he was on like there. Todd. Look how hard you're working on Spider-Man. Look how easy I can make it. <laughs> yeah, well, essentially so because he and like Todd and like all the artists. Jim Lee, who Todd McFarlane. That time was a superstar artist of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the one like who, the spaghetti webbing, Boom. as everyone calls it, because up mm -hmm. until then it had just been like kind of like graph paper coming out of his wrists. Um, so <laughs> then he's like, no, I, I, I want it three-dimensional. Like I want spaghetti webbing. So he's credited for that. Um, are popularizing it, but uh, God, I'm just, I, I like when I'm behind the counter. I feel like we're I not get, helping. Sorry. No, we're like, and now over here. <laughs> uh, so, um, New Mutants '98. Uh, Rob Liefeld creates this character because he's relatively simple to draw. He loves Spider-Man. Rob Liefeld's one of like according to interviews I read, one of his favorite characters is Spider-Man. He really wants to do. Old school Spider-Man, like the Spider-Man he had in the 70s and, and 80s, but now Spider-Man is married and he's an adult and he's a little less edgy and like he's not as funny anymore. And he wanted to get back to that. So Deadpool was partially based in that. Uh, it was Nisi well, Inza. And I believe this is a direct quote to Ninja Swords. Yes, he just also really liked Deathstroke. <laughs> but he did like Deathstroke. He he did really like Deathstroke. Who is Deathstroke? So Deathstroke is a DC character, uh, also known as <laughs> Slade Wilson. Oh, what's Deadpool's <laughs> real name? Uh, Roger Deakins. <laughs> Wade Wilson. <laughs> nice try. Uh, Don't Google it. Trust. So, um, but here's what's interesting. Nisienza uh, is the one who named him Wade Wilson. And he did it as kind of like a private in joke at Liefeld. And Liefeld had never really said, this is Deathstroke. He had said, yeah, he's kind of like Spider-Man and Deathstroke. He's kind of cool. Like he's, like, he's a mercenary, but he's mouthy like Spider-Man. And Nisi Enzo was like, well, I'm writing the script, and I'm naming him Wade. <laughs> like kind of as a private in joke between the two. Uh, and Deadpool, the name, came from a private joke that uh, his parents had. And the celebrity rule of threes, you like the whole celebrities mm. die in threes. So, like, Bob Hope passes away, and his mom and dad are like, who's in the Deadpool? What celebrities are in the Deadpool? And Rob Liefeld just always liked that name. So Deadpool. I like pools, Deadpool. and it's dead. dead. Later yeah. on, the Very. joke that gets told is that, like, based on the name connection, where do you do the death stroke? In, in the Deadpool. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's really, really, that's, that's really that's, funny. I'd never heard that. That's yeah. far too clever, though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, it's like a back backronym. That's uh -huh. oh yeah. Wow. I, yeah, my brain is reeling at that realization. I know. I know. That's that's Ooh. so good. So here here's uh, just a couple a couple quotes from Nisienza talking about the early those first couple issues of, of New Mutants. Uh, Rob grew up loving Marvin G uh, George's Teen Titans, so when he wanted to develop a kick-ass lethal mercenary, he came up with the name Deadpool and a costume that was part Spider-Man, part Deathstroke. I received the pages to script with very little background on the character. Uh, Rob's intentions were for Gideon and Domino, 
Domino. Two other characters introduced. Two in that other issue. characters. Domino is in the movie. Gideon has essentially. He doesn't really show up. It is relevance anymore. Yeah, what's he up doing there? I, have, I think he's just sitting there having stepdad hair. Yeah, yeah his hair is real silly. It's hard to make that stepdad relevant. Stepdad hair. Yeah, he's really uh, into crystal healing. Rob's intentions were for Gideon <laughs> and Domino also being introduced in issue in that issue to become center stage characters. In some ways, Deadpool was a little more than cannon fodder to be to bring some action into the story. Uh, he says, but then when I started getting into the scripting, I immediately recognized the undertones of Deathstroke in Deadpool's look, mostly because I knew how Rob was thinking. But because I already had various character voices for that issue who were serious and grim, I decided to go in the opposite direction of the audience's expectations to give Deadpool a sarcastic attitude. And though still deadly, not taking things so seriously, I gave him the name Wade Wilson is an absolute in-joke between Rob and myself. And we never revealed the joke for 20 years. Or something like I that. Mean, so there's a lot more to the quote. I'm not going to read all of it, but I just I just found that infinitely fascinating. So he pops up in those early episodes. Like in that one, he's sort of like he's hired to attack Cable, I think, mm -hmm. and then like it's just a part of what happens in that issue. He's very minor. And then he minor. just pops up yeah. here is, and there. Is, is, is that the one where they, they mail him back to his employer? Yeah. They put yeah. him in a crate. Yeah. Yeah. They they they. And is that also where the hand he he gets the hand right? That's what always stuck with me is him wrestling with with Cable's dis, uh, dismembered detached hand, hand, detached hand, going. This is so gross. Yeah, and, and, then, and you're reading it like you're like, oh, this character is aware this is gross. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. This and is it cute. wasn't until Joe Kelly that they broke the fourth wall. Who's Joe, Joe Kelly? Joe, we're skipping like so seven years. We are <laughs> skipping very far ahead. So before we get there, let's just Because very, I also think that's I the most Joe important Kelly. part of like this, this is this is where I get on board. Okay, yeah, this on. is hugely important. So uh, <laughs> he he premieres in New Mutants ninety eight. X Force also starts yeah, to premiere around. Issue that time. 100 is the final issue of New Mutants. It becomes X Force. Essentially, they're like, we're going in a different direction. We're edgier. We're X Force. And X Force are basically mercenary X Men, and they become more and more violent as the runs go along. But they're they're basically the X Men that do things that other X Men won't. Yeah. Uh, especially Which I always hated as a concept, even though I read a whole lot of X Force. Oh, and, and, and I and, love and when, X Force. When, and like, yeah. we're going to have a conversation about some later X Force because I have feelings. But oh yeah. yeah. We'll no, get there. You do. Yeah. When we get to that, when that's we get where to that my issues come to a head, where I'm sort of like, you don't get to be the X-Men and be like, here's how we do things, except for that team who does things differently because they're not us and that, ca like, that's not how it works. Have you, I mean, Some the US government does it pretty often. And we're g happy about that? <laughs> and we think it's a good example of how I'm we just should... i the humanity They're the X-Men. <laughs> Uh, Brief for into politics. My apologies, Internet. I uh, <laughs> did not realize my tongue was going that direction. Building, uh, building the Y, the Y men, really. <laughs> why? Why, man? Why, why, why no. man? Why? Uh, so we, had to put force uh, we, on we get, we, we get Deadpool uh, no. in a couple more issues of X Force, <laughs> but he proves popular enough that he gets his own limited four-issue series called The Circle Chase, <laughs> written by N Nisienza, but not drawn by Liefeld, right? Because nope. Liefeld was now at Image at this mm. point. Yeah, they'd already started their own company, and it was Larson, McFarlane, all those guys at Image, like the most 90s he, he had a, team. He had a color palette switch Deadpool over at, over at, over at Image, if I recall. He, he had the, the blue and white one, if I yes. remember. Yes. In the yeah, meantime, so. just to give you an, an impression of the level of celebrity attaching to these folks at this time, somewhere in here there is a Levi's commercial or a Lee's commercial or something like yeah, that. Yeah, a jean commercial yeah. of some sort with that, that Spike Lee directed that yeah. shows Rob Liefeld in his studio. Rob Liefeld's a celebrity. Uh, Rob <laughs> like Liefeld is like a full-on 90s, 90s celebrity. He's like in his celebrity. late teens or early yeah, yeah. 20s at this time. He's like 18 when he starts in comics, blows up instantly. He's in his early 20s just set. Like, it's crazy that you're Yeah, no, it was... Comics it was, don't do that. It was weird to watch. It was yeah. very yeah, weird that, to watch. That really hasn't happened since the golden age when, like, yeah. Jerry and Joe were just like, hey, here's this Spider-Man comic we created when we were 14. Yeah, it's yeah. a different world now. And, like, even Bendis, like, didn't get, like, celebrity status. Like, I'd recognize Bendis on the street, but most people wouldn't. In the 90s, yeah. Rob Liefeld was in commercials. Yeah. Like, it's a very different world then. Yeah. yeah. And comics were selling, like, hotcakes, and there was variants, and there was, like, so many different covers, and, like, they and were the, making lots of money. The collector's market was, like, uh, it was more of a bubble than do I, do I have to knew. Do I have to go back into our archive of our, our Image Comics episode and just bring out the pogs again and drop them <laughs> on the yeah. hey. Wizard Magazine, Wizard <laughs> Magazine. Yeah. Uh, uh. So, um, so Circle Chase <laughs> happens. Uh, Which is a good run, Juggernaut, it's, it's, Siren. Yeah, that's uh, where Black you Tom get. Cassidy. That's where you first get that big rivalry between uh, between them, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Juggernaut and Black Tom, always just hating on Deadpool. That's become a big thing. Um, but that's the, the first. But yeah, it might be in the movie. Um, so uh, well, you haven't seen it yet, have you? I haven't, but I, from what I've gathered. Yeah, same, same. I'm, I'm staying you're, away. You're sleuthing. I'm you're sleuthing. Away. My... Yeah. 
Uh, so that happens. Mark Wade, I think, does the second volume. Nisi Enza pitched a script. They didn't like it. They went with Mark Wade's one. Really? Thing. I don't think I've read that one. And it's, I, it's I have only, not read that one either. It's called Deadpool. It's a miniseries of four, and it's just a four-issue miniseries called Deadpool. But what's tricky is the number 300, which we'll be talking about, includes 98, that one through four, the other one through four, and then Deadpool one through 69. So you literally have to know the mythology of the character to go, how does this add up to 300? They counted they 98? Counted, they counted not only 98, but they also counted one through four twice, like the, the two right. chase and that. Volume one, one through four, volume And two, then one they four. counted get, get, uh, Cable and Deadpool one through 50. So that's not even just a Deadpool title. They counted someone else's. It is very Deadpool to ignore the rules. And oh, he has yeah. already had an mm. issue like 999 and a half. And whatever. he got married in 900. They did a flashback. Yeah. yeah. We'll get to that. Uh, Deadpool. So we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost so, to where Deadpool becomes so, Deadpool. And so Ajax is in that miniseries, which is important. Ajax is introduced yeah. in that form. Agent four, X? Uh, Ajax. Agent X is later. Ajax. Ajax. Uh, yeah, Ajax. There we go. I can hear. Ajax. Ajax is in the movie as Francis. Yes. Okay. And gotcha. Ajax in the in the comics for some reason always has a band-aid across his nose. He is a giant oh, mutant. I thought that was T Ray. Is that oh, Ajax? Oh, sorry, sorry, T Ray. You're right. You're right. Yeah. T Ray and Ajax are both introduced around the same time the same and look character. very much the same, yeah. except one has the band-aid, which is T Ray. <laughs> so Ajax in the movie is kind of a culmination of both. Mm -hmm. And there's a really weird thing in those early runs in that first patch after the miniseries where T Ray convinces Deadpool that he's actually Wade Wilson. Yep. And there's this weird identity crisis thing because yep. the Clone Saga was a thing. Oh my yep. god. And we're building to that, because I think that... It's like, the weirdest thing. That's the weirdest thing, but that, to me, is the uh, the sort of, like, vortex point of clarity when Deadpool fully becomes Deadpool. Okay. So I, I'm building my argument to that. So uh, you get two volumes of Deadpool all by himself, two when solo volumes. we say volume, we mean uh, different numbering. If you start over at a new number one, you're in the next, in the next volume. volume. As opposed to, on your bookshelf, this trade paperback and this next paperback are volumes one and two. When we're talking about numbering of single issues, it's like if a magazine started its numbering over again, that would be volume two. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, the word volume is used in two completely different ways. It's great and, and not confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you love talking about that at your comic book shop. Ah. Uh, so uh, we get volume one, Fabian Nissi ends at the circle chase. We get volume two, Mark Wade. Volume three is Joe Kelly. And that's 1997. And Marvel knows that they've got a fun character, but they don't, they're not 100% sold on him yet. So they're like, let's give it this Joe Kelly guy. He's, he's doing pretty well. He's got a good sense of humor. He can probably write for this really well. Let's, let's let him take it and run. And Joe Kelly writes it from issues 1 to 33, and then he gets Ben 10 and has to go off and, and write Ben 10. But in that run, we get uh, Deadpool number 11, which is one of the greatest, like I like I, I have I, I forgot issue? to it's the Spider Man okay. issue, I forgot I forgot to to send this uh, send this to Chief, but I have it pulled up here. Um, so, Spider Man Eleven, here's here's what I love about this. All right, so this is uh, I'm doing my best here. I know there's going to be some glare. What did I do? What am I doing, Chief? Oh, I this forgot. issue. Yeah, this All right. issue. Oh, so, this issue. Yeah. Oh, now, this. What you're looking at right now is actually not the Deadpool issue. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 47. Now I'm going to pull 60s? up. Mid 60s? It'd be early 70s, 47. Uh, 67. Oh, What's that? Put it back real quick. Okay, hold on. Let me pull it back up. I'm, I'm in my Marvel, Marvel Unlimited app. Yay. <laughs> Great app. You should all use it if you like Marvel comics at all. Uh, trying to do my best. Uh, there you go. All right, so you see that scene, yeah? Oh, Harry Jr. You had some you hair. You can see uh, hair. Harry, hair. Gwen, me, Mary Jane in there. It's it's iconic peak Spidey. Give me a second here while I pull this up. Uh, now here is the Deadpool comic. I'm just going to flip through this real quick. You're going to find... Issue 11 of Deadpool from circa 98, 97. Here is issue number 11 of Deadpool. It's okay, Chief. We, you're a busy man. It's not easy what you do. We understand that. But Let's this is fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Right, which... They took directly from the comic book. This is, this is the Deadpool one. This is Deadpool 11. The other one is uh, Amazing Spider-Man. You can see where they use similar frames. But Literally a the... couple of them copy-pasted, practically. Yeah, but in the Deadpool one... 
Deadpool has used an image inducer to make himself appear as Peter Parker and What's is making inducer? fun of all the characters. What's an image inducer? Uh, an image inducer is uh, it's a piece of technology that allows a character to completely look like another like character. A portable hologram. Which he uses yeah. all the time because of how Wade Wilson looks. Yeah, Which especially in the earlier yet. issues, yeah. What's that? Which we haven't mentioned so yet. So yeah. Wade Wilson, the character, the man, looks like someone who's constantly fighting cancer and losing because he's constantly fighting cancer and losing. He's His face is rotting off and rehealing all the time. He smells like a corpse, which you find out when Daredevil meets him way later on, which is an amazing issue. Uh, he is a man who's barely alive, but his healing factor won't let him die. So he's constantly just regenerating and is a gross creature. So he hides that as much as he can. And he often, very often, in the beginning, which I'd forgotten, gets cured. There are so many issues where yeah, he looks great. I read, like, so many of them. And then he breaks again. Mm -hmm. And then, like, at one point, one of my favorite weird issues was... They did was, that in, uh, Cable and Deadpool. Yeah. yeah. One of the weirdest ones was he gets cursed to look good and then wants to destroy his face because it's not his face. It's Tom Cruise's face. <laughs> oh, that's right! So there's oh, a 10-issue right. run where he gets cursed to look like Tom, C-R-U-Z, and he gets stopped everywhere and harassed because, hey, you're Tom Cruise! And then he tries to throw himself off a building, explode his face, but it's a curse looking like Tom Cruise. These, like, that's the thing is most people see him as, like, this Mountain Dew character. They see him as this, like, super, like, yeah, extreme. And he was, but there was also some gold until he found himself. Like, <laughs> yeah. being disguised as Tom Cruise as a curse is such a funny run. Uh, and so also, why is it that he is all right, living so, Spider-Man? So, so here's what happened. So here's what happened. He and his roommate blind out, and I actually need... I need help on Blind Al. They used to date Steve Rogers, Blind Al. Yeah, there's a whole arc about Steve having like a history of Blind Al, and there's an issue where like she finds like an old love letter from Steve. Fun fact for the movies. <laughs> oh my god, Isn't that amazing? that's amazing. Okay, so <laughs> oh. I, I'm gonna need help on Blind Al later, and we're we'll get to Blind Al in a second. But uh, Deadpool and Blind Al, his roommate, end up going back in time, and they end up in the '60s when Peter Parker is a boy. Uh, first becoming Spider-Man, and they took that issue from uh, issue number 47 of The Amazing Spider-Man, and they just lifted panels over, and any panels where Peter Parker or uh, Spider-Man appeared that they wanted to use in the comic, they just redrew Deadpool or Wade Wilson mm -hmm. over that. And they just, like, it was almost like rotoscoping it out. Uh, and you get these great moments, and I'll show this in a second, like the first time Wade Wilson meets... Uh, Harry Osborne. Harry Osborne walks in and goes, "What's the scam, hip cat? I thought I'd I thought I'd find you singing with the squares." And Wade Wilson asks Peter Parker, "Goes what?" <laughs> <laughs> Harry Osborne goes, "Hanging with the hard cases." Wade Wilson, "Excuse me, <laughs> rapping with the rubes." <laughs> Peter Parker, uh, Deadpool, are are you having a seizure? Speak English. And for pity's sake, what's up with that hair? Uh, it is, it's that bottom frame right there. Oh, man. It's, oh. It's so good. I like that they always make uh, Deadpool's uh, uh, yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Yellow, yellow. Yellow. It's a, yellow. One of those cool always. comic effects that you can just do that, that make him stand out. Yeah, so, so you, get, um, you start with Joe Kelly, you start getting stuff like that. You start and, to get meta... Uh, issues where they're like, all right, we have this sort of character who doesn't take things seriously. What are the possibilities of that? And there have been other characters in this vein. Mm -hmm. She-Hulk she had an 80s she run where she famously it. broke the fourth wall. Yeah. Uh, Ambush Bug over at DC mm -hmm. has had a lot of fourth wall breaking gags. Uh, but there was something about the chemistry with Deadpool and hitting in the late 90s and this particular like Joe Kelly run on top of the foundation they had mm -hmm. built uh, that just really hit. So you get to issue 27 of Deadpool. And that is the very first time Deadpool ever breaks the fourth wall. Mm. Issue 26 is the first book I wrote must read. Issue 26 and 27 really? are literally, yeah, I, I yeah. wrote notes while I was rereading like a crazy person. Oh uh, yeah, so picture, you're an insane person. picture someone walking through Target shopping, flipping through comics, and then stopping to write little asterisks and notes, and then like laugh about a joke and then keep going. I scared so many mothers. Uh, so <laughs> this would be proud of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a very like, <laughs> oh no. Um, so what I found was 26 and 27 were when he finally like found his voice. So yeah. we're we're on the exact same yeah. page. So uh, in, in 27, he that's the very first time, and I think I, I pulled a, a, an image from that. It'll just say DP 27, probably chief. Um, Wolverine and Kitty, he's in disguise, and Wolverine and Kitty Pryde are in a, a bazaar, and Wolverine can smell Deadpool, but he doesn't see him, and he's just like, 
Wade, is that you? And then Wade looks <laughs> at, back at the audience and goes, not as dumb as he looks, is he, folks? And so, like, Bugs Bunny. He's playing with Bugs yep. Bunny, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, so uh, that's the first time that we get that. Now, in this issue, <laughs> Deadpool's a little on the wacky side. So, like, there's some argument, like, well, Buzzy, was he really breaking the fourth wall? He was breaking the fourth wall. But, like, like there's some argument there. Now, uh, 28, the first reference to comics, Bullseye's like, Deadpool, it's been a long time. How long has it been? And he says something like, issue 17, we were, uh, we were fighting in Tibet, or something like that. Flies over it, Deb Bullseye doesn't recognize it. But here's where it gets interesting. Christopher Priest takes over writing at issue 34. And does oh. the most amazing thing I've seen a writer do in taking over a book. Yeah. You talk about the bag? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, so, what? what? Okay, so. Jim, okay, okay, so, so Chris, I, there's a, there's a picture. Christopher, yeah. just, just to give some people some, we've talked about Christopher Priest before. We have. One of the be, the, the quintessential, for, for me, for the quintessential uh, Black Panther volume is Christopher Priest. Priest's 1999 Black Panther run. Yeah. Like, that's. I want to read Black Panther. Where do I start? Go to Christopher, Christopher Priest. Priest. Let me know when you're done. We'll go from there. Um, but uh, Christopher Priest, he had this conception of him that he was the writer who was given dead properties uh, to allow them to die. It wasn't that he couldn't turn them around. It was, you're great, but this character's on his way out. So when he got Deadpool, he was like, all right, well, they're killing him. Now, 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 Joe he Kelly. He's weirdly not the only writer who has said that specifically about oh, I'm, Deadpool. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Joe Kelly, his plan was to actually kill Deadpool at number 33. Mm -hmm. And he got into the script and got it. As far as I know the story, maybe it's all urban legend, but he finished it, turned it in. They were actually drawing towards that being de the death of Deadpool. Because he dies at 33. He dies. He, he, is he at the actually end of dies. Dead. In 33, Thanos' love, death. Like, issue 33 <laughs> so literally... So remember our recent wow. episode. Deadpool Annual 1, which we missed in that yeah. retelling. Deadpool Annual 1 happens around issue 20, and it's a love story between Deadpool and death and how she loves him because he's basically the one that got away because he can't die. Uh -huh. So every time Deadpool gets maimed and massacred, they have, like, a beautiful 20 minutes together until he regenerates. So Deadpool... Thanos and Death have a love triangle because Thanos is pursuing Death and Death is pursuing Deadpool. I and love Deadpool that. is cool with it, but Deadpool can't die, so he can never see his main squeeze. And Deadpool, way later, like two years ago, there's a Deadpool Thanos miniseries that deals with all of this, and it's fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> all right, so issue 33, he dies, and he's in paradise with Death, and they're talking about how much uh, they're gonna make out like teenagers. Like, that's the end of that book. They're like, we're just gonna go make out like prepubescent teenagers. And Deadpool's like, woohoo! That's it. Joe Kelly's done. Christopher Priest comes in. The very first scene in that issue is Deadpool lugging a wheelbarrow behind him uh, with a giant bag in it. And he's walking through uh, like this old, dilapidated looking town. I can't remember what, do you remember what it's called? I can't remember what it's the called. Town, but... Did we mention that uh, tonight is going to have a lot of violence? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just. Sorry, audience. A, a weird oh, yeah. thing that, like, <laughs> Deadpool books are generally parental advisory. Yeah, they're pretty uh, harsh. And not all of the jokes are going to land for you. And, you know, just grain of salt, all of I this. Was gonna, yeah, Continue. Yeah, and we, we have Brian Forrest, I think, in chat making sure that everyone knows this must be NC-17. Yeah. Yeah, rated in for... Uh, hey, worth, Brian. Worth Hi, Brian. noting, in the first 33 issues, there are so many pop culture references because oh, yeah. they wanted to make sure people knew how much they love pop culture, but rereading those, oh, good God. Like, the early 90s, so much of that doesn't even make sense anymore. No. Like, as much as the 70s and 60s mm -hmm. slang is like, whoa, rereading 90s slang now is like, what are they talking about? <laughs> That's amazing. So it's worth it just... It's almost like looking at the old ads in that Captain Marvel. Just oh. some of the stuff they talk about, beautiful. It is weird to think that that was 20 years ago and they were calling back to a book that yeah. was 30 years ago. And in my head, those gulfs are much wider. Yeah. 25 yeah. years of Deadpool. Isn't that oh, weird? Man. This year, right? Yeah, 93 was Deadpool. Jesus. So 25 years. So yeah, it was longer ago than some of the references they... Oh, God. Uh, so, What's in the bag? <laughs> so, um, uh, Chief, I, th I think you have a couple images from DP34. Uh, can you find the one with him in a bag? I hate to give you that, that, uh, that job. I know you have got a lot of images to dig through. Um, so, 
Christopher Priest is given this mm. character who was killed, literally That's killed. That's a tough beginning. And yep. told, bring him back and write for him for as long as you as long as you're willing, essentially. So he, we, when Priest takes over, we find Deadpool in the land of killed characters. And in the land of killed characters are all the characters that have died under Christopher Priest's watch. <laughs> and he has to fight them. And he has to fight them to get out. And there's and a couple that also just stay dead. Like he fights Uncle Ben and uh, Bucky as oh. well. Yeah. Back when Bucky was permanently Bucky was dead. Bucky was permanently dead. There was a time uh, when that was, was a rule that was an of, that was a law of comics. There was dead, which means probably coming back. And there was Bucky, Bucky dead, dead, which means never ne coming back. Yeah. Uncle this Ben, Uncle Ben is Bucky dead. Yeah. Uncle Ben is Bucky. He, and, he and occasionally Gwen's... comes back for Ultimate short universes. Yeah, except for except for Spider Verse. They and, come to their senses. And Marvel Universe six one six, Gwen Stacy is dead. Okay, so here we go. Oh, yes, there's the bag. So, uh, uh, doesn't seem doesn't... so bad. So after this moment, he turns the corner into this town, and everyone is versions of Deadpool. <laughs> So he is dealing with hell's not so bad until he sees everyone dressed as a different take on Deadpool. And the bag is one of the funniest jokes I've seen a first writer nail in three pages. And the, <laughs> I believe the bag says, every good idea Joe Kelly ever had. It, no, 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 the, I, no, I wrote it down. The quote is on the bag, quote, everything that made this book work. Wait, <laughs> he, really? He throws away everything, everything that, made that made this, this book, book work. work. I could have sworn. <laughs> right. There it is. <laughs> Isn't that Every amazing? Good I did, Every good Kelly idea ever Kelly had. ever had. Does it la get labeled as both? I think, it, it, I think there's Kelly a change. It, 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 might, it might change, yeah. Hold on, I own it. Yep. And? And? Yep. <laughs> there it is! Everything that made this book We did it together! Yeah. So he throws it into this, <laughs> this pool of ink essentially to erase it. This is where this is also oh where the Warner God. Brothers analogies begin to come in of like yes, really and I've actually got a Ooh, quote that a Looney Tune that goes directly into that. Mm. So we get that. Deadpool goes into the house and sees all the characters that have died under Christopher Priest's watch and he goes, "Oh no. Oh no 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 no." And he claws his way back out of that place and awakens in a scientist's tube. So, Chief, if you go back to that one, that, uh, that earlier, thank you very much. He awakens here. And he says, uh, and that is, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret uh, now, would it? Fine, all right, you dragged it out of me. The secret is, uh, none of this is actually happening. There is a man at a typewriter. <laughs> this is all his twisted, twisted imagination. imagination. And this is where he goes full Deadpool. This is where, this where goes, we go we full, full fucking Deadpool is issue 34. So I just want to also point out a fascinating thing, which is that this concept has been done by a writer before. Yeah. And it's fascinating because it was done by Grant Morrison when, on his run on Animal Man, except the branching off point from that realization that this is just a story could not be more, like, it, it is interesting that, like, the Marvel character goes kind of pure nihilism, but in a good way. Like, like nihilism gets a bad rap on occasion. Mm -hmm. But very much the nothing matters, so I can be whatever I need to be. Mm -hmm. Whereas Animal Man goes, oh god, everything matters because the universe is now is at the hands of these lunatics, but it just has to make dramatic sense. Mm -hmm. How We're talking about like volumes. Mm. This is the end of the current volume of Deadpool. Mm. This is the very last one. Issue 300, they're gonna restart the new number one. I would like you to read a passage from this issue that ties into what you just said. This features Gary Dugan. The I haven't read this book yet, by the so, way. So uh, your reference, uh, the reason I'm skipping ahead 20 years is because of this panel right here. That's Gary Dugan getting in the car. Uh, why, is this hacky? I'm sure you have a lot of questions for me. I've written more issues about you than any other writer. Nah, not really, Gary. You're just doing Grant Morrison's bit from the end of Animal Man, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> And it all comes full oh, circle. Uh, there it is. I, well, <laughs> there it is. I just had to. It's oh, it was face. too good. Oh, right there. oh, that's so I... fucking genius. So the fourth wall is just broken in real time with Deadpool wow. in a comic you hadn't opened yet on the desk. Wow. That was like a magic trick. Please hold while I open this comic page that was written three oh months ago. Oh my god, that's, that's just, amazing. That's just that's fucking yeah. me up. <laughs> oh that's my just fucking god. That's how good Deadpool so can be. Good. That's how good it can change your life. No, I, wow. I have to admit, doing key question, I went into it was like, <laughs> I'm not a giant. Did that happen? <laughs> oh, I went into, into the key question episode of Deadpool thinking, 
I'm not a giant Deadpool fan, but I, I, I respect who he is. I'm just not a giant fan. And I came out of it going, oh my God, he's one of the greatest characters in <laughs> comics. Like, he's Can't amazing. Uh, so here's, here's what I, going off of what you just said about the Warner Brothers, all of that, here's what Christopher Priest said. Mm -hmm. He struggled with Deadpool a lot. He did not get it. it, it even in uh, the issue 34, he was still struggling with it. And finally, I think it was around 36, 37, he fully realized this. As I was writing that story, it finally occurred to me, it was okay to make Deadpool look stupid. That was a huge revelation for me. My entire career, I was taught that the hero must never be the subject of ridicule. But Deadpool is insane. Possibly too insane to realize he's acting foolishly. I could write Deadpool more like Bugs Bunny, a perpetrator and instigator who was also a free spirit and totally unflappable. Finally, Deadpool, my Deadpool, and not my parodying of Kelly's form, or of Kelly, Joe Kelly's book, took form, and uh, Jim, I think the artist, delivered a memorable issue, number 37, where Deadpool is found worthy of lifting Thor's hammer because he becomes Beta Ray Bay. Beta Ray B Wade. I, I now want Beta Ray Bay, by the way. Beta yeah, Ray Beta Bay. Bay. Beta funny. Ray Bay. Uh, so, like, so Priest <sighs> turns him into the fourth wall self-aware, we're all in a comic book, and I know that reality. He's the one who brings that to it. Joe Kelly started that run, but it was only because of Joe Kelly's run in that direction that Christopher Priest was able to take the baton and run the race just a little bit faster. Before we leave the undead world of so Deadpool's, which we're about to, uh, there's also a moment in that late issue where he's in hell. So this is when he's fighting everyone that's dead, including Bucky. Right. But he then goes to find zombies because he's killing all of them again to get his way out. And he discovers Aunt May and oh. Uncle Ben naked, oh. and it's the most nope. gratuitous shot in '90s comics. And this was ever, like I remember this put reading it, it put in it, '90s. Put it, put, it, put it right on the on the. Yeah. So this is Deadpool escaping uh, his his hellish existence. I start uh, forward. Right there. No, and tilt, tilt it up. up. There you go. There you go. So this is him taking out all the people, and then this is him hunting down people to, to maim and dismember to get his way out. And then, oh, okay, a couple more. What's going on? Oh, sweet oh. mother of <laughs> Thank you. I... Oh, no, no, it's it, PG comic. It was, it was okay, the crop creatively. But this will affect you if you're an Aunt May fan. Yeah, no, it <laughs> This is way more traumatizing than knowing oh, that. Oh, Spidey Kid. Oh, like... yeah, Spidey Kid moment is like, no, no, no. no. Oh, no. no. And this they... is way before Aunt May, Marissa Tomei. This was like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Aunt Bay. Aunt Bay, thank you for, again for Never that. Never not funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, we will uh, question if our set doesn't have a fourth wall, can we break it? Of course we can. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is also Beta Ray Bay uh, Wade, if uh, you guys wanted to see it. I think I've learned how to, how ah. to do this. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, this is also geez. the beginning of we can put a Deadpool mask on anything and it becomes funny. Mm. Yep. Yeah, also that. Uh, and I by think the I ran into bad examples for a long time. I would, I would yeah. run into sort of like, it's, it's interesting where Deadpool is, is kind of easier to appreciate for me in 2018 than he used to be. Same. Partly because, like, the, the sincere comics have more respect. Like, people actually know who Captain America is and care. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel like it's just cynicism that's winning. Mm -hmm. um, and there were times when it was like, nobody cares about the deep, glorious knowledge, but we can sell four Deadpool books at any given time forever. And you would get kind of frustrated, and you'd be like, and you're gonna make a bunch of violent jokes and hook kids on this character and then not make anything I can actually hand to a kid with this character. I love how you just parallel Deadpool to straight crack. <laughs> you're gonna hook kids, you're gonna put a bubble in them, give them one for well, free, and like, then they're stuck. <laughs> I, I, got, I, I ended up with like baggage around this character because it was Same. almost like, Same. you know, other, other people do the fourth wall breaking thing, other people do that, and then at a certain point, it was like, I was joking around that I should call this episode How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Deadpool. Yeah. Like, because you're not over, wrong. Terry, Terry Southern would be like, proud. I, I saw great examples here and there and there's just something about him like he's a survivor <laughs> and what you said that like being willing to look foolish mm -hmm. when people use him well you can cut through a lot of nonsense and comic book nonsense specifically in ways I really appreciate using Deadpool yeah uh, by the way we will be doing our five minute one uh, shot topic tonight so please start sitting in your topics it can be about Deadpool it can be about anything uh, Pools, we, we, we warned Koi about it earlier, so he's all prepped and ready to, uh, <laughs> ready, ready for your Can hair you pulling. Can you ever be ready? Hair pulling torture.
I, I uh, was yeah, I was not a Deadpool fan. I like I, I got out of that teenage my like teenage fascination yeah. with 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 those with those books and then walked away from Deadpool really hard. Like yeah. really hard is like only you can when you're young enough to actually feel violently opposed to something that <laughs> fictional character doesn't matter. Is in fact harmless. That is in fact novel. harmless and be like, <laughs> I'm not gonna read Harry Potter, that's for losers. <laughs> and then you know, you hit 23, and you're like, okay, I read them all in one day. See, I feel what like the Dead, fuck have I been doing? Deadpool's the, the, the hot topic of characters. Like, you <laughs> hate them, you hate them so much because you don't know, and you go in, and you're like, oh, oh I like but that God, shirt. that fucking sale oh, rack, this man. This is so good. Oh, oh, oh they've got photos for six dollars. Like, you but know, it's, but it's Deadpool jokes where you're like, except that was funny, that was yeah. funny. and that was so, funny, I, and that totally works, and that's ev evolving the character, and then like, it just. It's I didn't, topic. I didn't know till Marvel vs. Capcom three. That was that was my introduction to, to, to Deadpool. Is that where he beats people with the life bar? Oh, uh, yeah. Because that was a formative moment. Like Same. same. I was like, wait, he does. Okay, maybe Deadpool's a character <laughs> so, I need to no, look so a little I, bit more So I actually, into. I got to direct a voiceover for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 back in the day, and so there were there were like maybe two characters in that in that on the Marvel side of that game that I didn't know, and that was one of them. <laughs> and that was like, I'm gonna have to sit down and figure this out, especially because like like Nolan North is coming in to do this voice and like. I, I don't want to. I don't want to feel like an asshole in front of <laughs> Nolan North, because that's going to make me feel bad for the rest of my life. Um, and so I, I did a bit of a deep dive and like weirdly fell, fell in love with the character. And it was one of the most delightful recording sessions I've ever had in my life. Oh yes. And we just like yeah, just four hours of just bad B. Arthur jokes and <laughs> and just coming up with as many sick burns so as humanly possible. Deadpool does have like. I a lifelong love. fascination and love of B. Arthur. Like he, like that's a giant joke in the comics. He's a huge fan of B. Arthur. Thinks predating the Golden Girls like revival and and everybody realizing that they were always cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. they've always been. They've great. always been cool. They've always been the coolest. Uh, been where the does the Chimichanga thing come from? I'm actually so, not familiar with this, and I, I need I need blind out stuff too. Okay, yeah. so I actually know the deep, deep, deep reason for Chimichanga. The writers were trying to figure out something funny sounding. And they were watching an episode of SNL with, um, oh, what was the guy's name from Dexter that played the commissioner? He was a, he was a, ah, Jimmy Smits. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Smits. Smits was on an episode of SNL, and they had a bunch of white guys all pronouncing Mexican food cartoonishly strong while they were going out to lunch. So they were like, I remember oh, that bit. We need some, so we need to go out and get some tacos. Yeah. And like everything else was normal. And then they got to the word chimichanga, and they made it like this really big word. And they were like, oh, Deadpool would love this skit. <laughs> and by way of Deadpool loving this skit, I bet Deadpool would love the word chimichanga, and he would love Mexican food. So while writing an issue of Deadpool, they saw an SNL skit making fun of how people pronounce chimichanga, and that became and on brand for it. Deadpool. Do you happen to know what issue that was? Because like I, I really want to find that direct reference. It like, was in the 30s, because it was in the crossover. The 1930s. In the 1930s, when Stanley was inventing Deadpool the first uh -huh. time. Uh, no, it was it the was Depression. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Depression Chongas era and chimichanga. Because the only food anyone had. Because they're preserved. People were standing in chimichanga <laughs> lines. His just... veggie chimichanga from weeks ago is still on his counter. No, still I good. Well, I mean, good-ish. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, it's it's there. The it's cats a chimichanga. It's it holds. Fine. They hold. Every cats year, won't touch Deadpool it. Day, which is a holiday I invent whenever there's a Deadpool release of any Thank major you, kind. Thank you, Chief. Uh, yes. Chimichangas, by the way, are, are oh, amazing. And they're so dense. That's, I eat them once a year, and that is on Deadpool Day, which is whatever the most major release Deadpool has that that year is. So Deadpool Two, I'm having my chimichanga of the year, and I'm very excited. I've already wow. picked my place. Already picked my ingredients. Can you? I I'm, mean, like, like your 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 body is a strange temple. Can you even handle that? I'm not. I won't know till the 18th. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but chimichanga, I'll try to find you the exact one. But it's an uh, SNL. Dude, I, like Tex Mex is absolutely correct. Thank you, Chief, because like that was like. Like it was like in Texas, it was like chimichangas and Dr Pepper were like and Frito Pie, oh, it's, like, it's were like staples where, where of where the diet. Just, like, where it's always who like, what can we be from there? I'm from that place. Yeah, I'm from Texas. <laughs> Hi, mom and dad. That Daredevil uh, issue I was talking about. So they, a lot of different writers have different ideas about what's in his pouches. When the he was in a Daredevil uh, issue, Daredevil looked at him and you saw a Daredevil vision of what Deadpool looks like, and it's just lots of horrible smells and rotting. And then in each of his pouches is different Mexican condiments. <laughs> So he's always got like stuff at the ready, like like pico de gallo. He's got hot sauce in his bag. Yeah. So he's just pouched up with Mexican condoms. He's such a stupid cartoon <laughs> character. And like, this I love about him. I like mean jokes. I don't love violence for its own sake. I don't love, but like Matt Deadpool's so damn lovable. So yeah, but there it is. Oh, oh my God, oh. bless you, oh, thank Chief. Thank you so much, Chief. I, this is one of my favorite frames in Deadpool. Chief. 
Oh. There are at least a dozen noxious odors. Cilantro, the cilantro the is fresh. The flatulence, my God. He smarts like a corpse pulled from the Hudson. There's cheap bird on his breath. Oh it's my God, that's yes, so gold. And they're funny. using And they're using that great, my favorite of the Deadpool effects, which is that the, ring. The Daredevil so, effects. Yep. The uh, ring, the ring yeah. one. Is, was that a Mark Wade? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Mm. God. Oh my God, that's funny. So, <laughs> so we're at like 37, uh, and 38 when he gets Tom Cruise. Oh, okay, see, I'm not, uh, so. Uh, uh, who takes over after Priest? Because Priest only writes for it for like Priest is still on from Tom Cruise. Priest brings in Black Panther at issue 44. There's a Black Panther dealing with, and Black Panther at the time is Killmonger. So there is Black oh, Panther dang. Killmonger oh, no. in Priest dealing with uh, Deadpool and the Avengers have to come into the fold. So there's an entire like worldwide epidemic that Deadpool gets involved with because Priest is writing it. So at this point, Priest is like, well, I like the character. What else am I doing? Oh, Black Panther, Killmonger. Let's. And there's a whole thing that Deadpool gets hired to kidnap back a leopard that someone stole from Killmonger. And like he's a mercenary to kidnap a leopard. That's the issue. And the Avengers get involved and it's magical. And he still looks like Tom Cruise at the time. I'm also gonna call this out just because we have this opportunity and because it's mm. so nice to be able to say this. Everything we're talking about is available across a bunch of, as far as I know, currently in print paperbacks called mm -hmm. Deadpool Classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you pick up Deadpool Classic number vo volume one, it'll give you the early appearances, a bunch of that stuff, and it'll end with the first Joe Kelly issue. So volume two will be the start of all the rest of the stuff we're talking about, and it continues on for like 13, 20 volumes. And I think and a lot of it's on Comixology. It's a, 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 a lot of unlimited? what I read in like preparation for today is on Comixology Unlimited, yeah. and it's all on Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, I only so had to buy one book. Yeah. So for, yeah, for if, you, if you have, if you subscribe to either one of those services, you can read all of this stuff as part of that service. And I should point out what you said about volumes earlier applies here because right, Sorry. Deadpool Classics <laughs> Volume One, that yes. book, the book with the one on the spine, Deadpool Volume One, don't you dare, Circle Chase, Deadpool Volume Two, written by Mark Wade, and then goes into Deadpool Volume Three. But that's volume one of the actual TPB. So You're making it worse. I bought them via Amazon Sorry. in this form because I didn't want to retouch my old 90s comics out of fear. Yeah. Uh, so these are all the classics as they were just talking about. And one through nine are the main continuity. And then it gets into like issue 10 is Headpool. And then it gets into like Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe and all that jazz. So uh. you can get them all for And Amazon always has sales. Uh, it's well worth diving in. And then when you get to volume nine, it's Agent X, which is a character that is hard to describe. That's Simone, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I can't remember who. Oh man. Like, Who's so Christopher Priest there? can't really like he's. I, I don't know. I, I don't think he was enjoying writing for Deadpool. I feel like he didn't think he was the right guy for it. I think he left at like forty nine because the yeah. writing changes jarringly, and I even wrote that. So I think forty nine is yeah. around there. Um, and that sounds about right to me too. About a year and a half ish. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I can't remember who took over. But Gail Simone takes over somewhere around the late 50s, early 60s in issue numbers. And this is some of her first comic this book work. Of, so it's one of those weird, like, Grateful to Deadpool things for me back when I had more of my baggage, where it was like, even if I didn't enjoy him, he was like, the reason she got her career going. Yeah. And she will love him till the day she dies. And no. she introduces the red, uh, uh, go, what's it called? Uh, uh, it's in the movie. The scooter? Scooter. The red scooter is a Gail Simone creation, which is a weirdly important thing. In issue 66, we get the scooter, and it becomes a fixture of Deadpool. So check out, so I wrote down uh, 54 and 55 are Punisher and the Nuki family, which is fantastic. And they introduce a Vespa. But then in issue 66, the, the scooter Vespa. comes involved. So I'd recommend 54, 55, and then 57 through 60 is a whole new X-Force-like team. And then Gail Simone comes in around there, and she's fantastic. So she has amazing stories about this as well, where uh, back when Gail Simone got into comics, she is a, a superstar writer mm. uh, who has done a million amazing things in comics. Uh, but when she was starting out, she hadn't given up her day job, which was a hairdresser. Uh, yeah. No. She's, yeah. I mean, she's the coolest lady in the world. But like, so this means that there were early <laughs> on times where she's on the phone with her editor being like, no, no, the severed legs should blah, 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 blah. While somebody who's just trying to get a really nice bob is like, what, what is happening behind like, me? This is in like the Midwest, right? Like, I, I do what, not know no, what area of the country. I feel like she's, but she was like in the northern Midwest or something like that. That sounds like, accurate yeah. to me. Sounds I think right. she lives in the Pacific Northwest now. I don't know if she did then, but either way, not like the streets of a major metropolis. Yeah, yeah we had um, her in for Roundtable a couple years ago. Remember when that? Oh, God, it was, last was so summer? fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that last summer? Oh, I my. I know it feels like 100 couple years. years ago. every time, Matt. Oh, <laughs> my God. I moved very weirdly in here. Oh, my God. Man, we've got a time stone in this place or something. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath the uh, 
Yeah, uh, CR table. So, oh. and, and now, now talking about Gail Simone, mm. this is one of the deciding factors for me personally that made me love the character because people have been asking. For me, I was like, this is like just it's very juvenile. This is like, like I get like he's got fart jokes and I love fart jokes. I'll do fart <laughs> jokes until I die. It's true. But for whatever reason, like fart jokes and comics, I'm like. Come on, guys. Like, re really? Let's grow up, Deadpool. Come on. Let's grow up, Dead. Like, breaking the fourth wall, I'm like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's like, a fun this... novel, the, 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 Yeah, the, there are many things that can bath, pass through the, the fourth wall, but gas is not one of them. Is oh! <laughs> I love you. Yep. Love you, too. So, uh, <laughs> so for me, and what I started realizing uh, as I was doing the Key Question episode was that I was really allowing the, the fans who annoy me the Deadpool fans who annoy me to define my appreciation for the character. Because when I got to the Gail Simone run and started reading what she was doing with the character, I was like, this is really interesting. And this is some, there's some really fun stuff. Like she addresses uh, in one of the uh, issues, like in a Deadpool very nuanced way, like kind of domestic abuse a little bit. And like she kind of, like Deadpool kind of shows his heart. And he's like, this relationship, this is not good. Like. For real, guys, like, put it all on the table. This needs to be fixed. Um, you're doing this. You're you're not helping, but you're also kind of suffering under this asshole. So, I, I, I uh, therapy is a great choice. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, here's a gun. <laughs> uh, and I remember clearly he just leaves, he and just then like leaves. two panels later, you hear a bang. You hear a bang, and you have no <laughs> idea who got what? shot or what <laughs> happened. That's it. That's it. But like, I remember reading that and thinking, she made some good points about him being an abusive husband, but her like not like not being a peach back. But it's really kind of all back on him. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and then I read interviews with Gail Simone where she had said, "I will go back to Deadpool anytime." And I was like, Gail Simone is one of the smartest writers <laughs> in comics, and she loves. What the fuck is wrong with me? that I can't appreciate. So that's what really kind of punched me in the, in the face and made me start reconsidering it. You well, know? and then, like, I, there, there was a separate, uh, as Deadpool grew in popularity, Deadpool cosplay got really popular. Mm -hmm. and, and that was you're one of the, like... Because you going to Well, and it, it actually, for, for me, like, I was sort of, that was part of what sold me on Deadpool, was just that I couldn't deny how much damn fun everyone had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Because it was delightful. <laughs> like, as long as people weren't crossing the line of actively bothering others. There were all these wonderful little no need to look cool displays mm -hmm. that were possible because you were dressed up as Deadpool. And you sort of had permission to be whimsical and permission mm. to be silly. And like all of this, as long as you're not actively harassing other people, it made space for a lot of not taking yourself seriously in, in a really delightful way. Marvel's he's very, puck. He's Marvel's very puck. puckish. There he is. Like he's, he's pure Marvel mischief. has a puck, but he's not that one. Not, not that, that puck. puck. He's Canadian, though. He's yeah. not the Alpha Flight puck. <laughs> he's the other puck. Yeah. They're both That's Canadian. The other Canadian puck. Yeah. Worth noting, speaking of mischief, we didn't mention who that scientist turned out to be. Oh, I actually don't remember. So the scientist that we saw in that one panel and is the first, Priest. In, the, in the early pre stuff, the, for the first six issues, it turns into this like, but who's my dad? So there's this weird like Deadpool father thing. And then the, the scientist turns out to be his dad, who then turns out to be Loki. So there's like two issues where you're like, is Deadpool the son of Loki? And it makes just enough sense. You're like, oh no, Mission. he's not. Yeah. But like no. they have Thor come in and there's a moment where they banter about being brothers and you wonder if he does, then he gets the hammer and you're like, is he the son of Loki? <laughs> so there's this amazing moment where it goes into North mythology and like where you wonder if Deadpool's a Norse god. It's fantastic. It's just, it, I think we it's finding the right runs. We may also uh, not have mentioned in canon that at some point they establish his backstory, which is that he is a, a different, he went through the same program Wolverine did. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. not actually um, a mutant. He's, uh, depending, no, the, is well, he weapon, ever a mutant? Is he sometimes a mutant? I can, I can, I can answer this, actually, because I, right. under, I, I actually have mapped the Weapon X program, and I understand Fantastic. how it works. Fantastic. One of the greatest quotes in human history, I, I have mapped, mapped the Weapon X program. <laughs> I was like, this sh someone has explained this. I'm going to find it. I'm going to figure it out. So and Maverick, I GW Bridge, let's go. It's actually called the Weapon Plus program. The Weapon Plus program was a series of systems where they were trying to make augmented soldiers. The original Re Weapon 1 program was the, was the Captain America Captain America, program, the yeah. Super Soldier program. And each iteration, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I think they got up to, had, was like a different approach. 
The Weapon 10 program was the original. Let's try and use mutants. So mutants were the Weapon 10 program. I think, uh, I think and Wolverine comes out of that. Wolverine which comes is out of Weapon, Weapon X. X. Weapon 10. Because Weapon 10. Uh, and I think Deadpool was either Weapon 9 or Weapon 11. Is he came out of the same weapons program, but it wasn't necessarily the mutant push, mm -hmm. or he was just a side connection of that. But they've done plenty of stuff that wasn't mutants, and then stuff after the Weapon 10 program that was also still he's, some mutants. He's mutant not. adjacent at the very Weapon 13 least. was using, like, time systems, and, like, they yeah, got It's very, weird. yeah, it's a dense, dense... In no way did Grant box. Morrison do, it, like, a bunch of stuff to this to make it very complicated. That <laughs> never happened. That's but not so Grant Morrison? No! I think as far as canon, he's human. He just has been augmented through this horrible okay. program. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Through the Weapon, so, weapon Plus program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, but Gail, Gail Simone takes it over, uh, and then finally... Uh, after three or four, like Marvel had, oh, like the sales numbers were never great for volume three. For the, and by volume three, I mean Joe Kelly. Round of numbering three. Mm. Yeah, uh, Joe Kelly into Christopher Priest, this run that we've been talking to, kind of the seminal starting point for Deadpool. Um, it, it had never been a sales blockbuster for Marvel. Mm. Like it was, it was good. She's another one who has said that great. she thought she like that the book was in trouble when the, like she when she got it and she wasn't yeah. sure. And she like, was she still a new writer. To give somebody else the book immediately, but then they ended up that her run was working and it went longer and. And then they changed it to not. It, it turned into Agent, Agent X. X. And Agent X is, I think, on par with the Clone Saga as the most. What? Woo. Because I actually <laughs> love the Clone Saga. I, I am a defender of the Clone the Saga. The Clone Saga is a famously divisive 90s uh, <laughs> uh, Spider-Man storyline. The original Clone Saga actually happened in the 70s, but when people say Clone Saga, they're usually talking about the 90s story. I've tried to read it. I read it when it's I was a teenager, dense. and I felt that I had a handle on it, and I then went back into my, my books and was like, I have no idea what's the, happening anymore. The biggest anymore. problem with the Clone Saga is 12 writers tried to end it, and no one tried to start it. <laughs> So it just kept <laughs> happening at you. Everybody's like, twist, twist, twist. You're like, bleh, bleh. But And there's some behind the scenes stuff that you can look into where people talk about like, yeah, no, we were gonna do this and then they told us with zero seconds to spare, do that other it, thing instead. And then someone else like it's, finished their ending and they're like, what? It is, it is the comic book equivalent of Action Park. It is, it is, <laughs> it is just a series of water slides. <laughs> Badly conceived by people who don't understand how engineering works, and they probably killed a couple. Oh, people. Some people love it. Oh and some, people, and some ben, people love it. Ben Riley, I think, is one of the best. Ben Riley is the best. Thing. Ben Riley is literally an identity crisis in human form. Oh, he is. He is my blue hoodie boy. Like I Peter love my Parker blue hoodie. is power and responsibility, and what do you make someone feel more responsible than there's another you, and you're not sure what your identity is? Like that is brilliant as a concept, just executed poorly in ben, his suit. His ben, outfit. Ben was great. Long so, story short, he's another guy who thought he was Peter Parker, but he's not. He's yeah, not and that's that's a back. whole other. Cool. Episode. There's like, an episode. I'll be That's back in the fall episode. for the Clone Saga. Yay. Um, so Agent X <laughs> is as convoluted because the entire Agent X opens. So thank you, Chief. Deadpool ends, and it ends with the death of Deadpool. So Deadpool Again. dies Again. for the third time, kind of fourth time in issue 69, which had to be a joke they planned. Yes. Uh, and basically, he the last run is actually pretty decent. It's 66 through 69, and what happens is Deadpool accidentally kills these four triads at once, but he doesn't know he didn't actually do it. And the guy that actually killed these triads wants credit for killing these people because he's an honorable assassin. So all through the end... That's this one. That's right. So all right. through the That's end, right. he's That's just right. slowly killing Deadpool, and he's poisoned him, and he's taken him out. So Deadpool actually dies at the end of 69, but he dies in, like, a fire with other people. Very important for Agent X, because in Agent X, there is a new guy in town who talks in gray speech bubbles, who's wacky, who's got scars, but who ladies love, and he's always surrounded by women. There's all this stuff happening. He's having sex all the time. It's basically a James Bond book with a merc. So instead of like a spy, he's a merc, and everybody's like, guess it's Deadpool. And like um, Taskmaster trains him how to fight, and Bullseye's like, we know you're Deadpool, Wade. And he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. For issues and issues and issues. So you're just reading this like, either they're tricking me, or this is gonna be the worst bait and switch. And you're like, like, I'm reading Deadpool, maybe? For 15 <laughs> issues, it's known as For over a year. Over a year, and it isn't till issue 14 
a year and two months when it's finally revealed that Deadpool comes back and Agent X is also there. And you're like, <laughs> So Deadpool is in like a drooling comatose state and you find out that his healing factor was spread through three people and he has pieces of memories of all of them and then that the bad guy wants his skills back. So the skills of the bad guy went into Agent X, the insanity of Deadpool went into Agent X and some of the personality. So he wants to put all of their personalities back into each other and then Oh, he betrays them and tries to kill them all, and Agent X and Wade Wilson are two separate people and save the day. It's so weird. And it's so long. It's not like a one issue, like a one-off. That went on for over a year, and I'm reading it in hindsight for this show going, how did people survive the 90s? Like, what was this? We didn't. What was this journey? And he also, he wears, like, <laughs> snowboarder glasses and a oh. trench coat, like, in the Matrix. And he's, like, scarred, but all of his scars are perfect X's on. To, to, to be fair, for, for anybody who didn't survive the, the 90s, we did wear snowboarder glasses and trench coats, even if it fair. was 90 degrees out. That fair. was actually a thing. And his name was Alex Hayden, <sighs> which is the most I'm a merc in the 90s name <sighs> I think they could find. So, maybe skip Agent X. <laughs> That's what everyone has said. <laughs> and that's actually why I, was, I wasn't even going to do that. I was going to be like, it's in then the Agent X, and uh, then we can forget about it. It counts. Uh, so, um, I, again, I'm, I'm kind of just like rehashing some of the key question stuff, but like, it's just fascinating to me. So we literally have a Deadpool in chat who just said, "Love Agent X." Yay! Oh, oh, I love that. I, 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 I love that it's someone actually called Deadpool. Dude, I thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad there's because so I love the Clone Saga. So when I meet people that love the divisive stuff, it makes me I feel bonded to. Uh, them. So yes. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, so Deadpool goes away at, uh, around Deadpool 69. Agent X comes in, but then they discontinue that about a year later, and that all happens around 2000. To 2003, I, 2004 I want to say. is Cable and Deadpool. So, Cable and Deadpool comes out. Then uh, that goes away a, a 50 issues later. So but they it's had a 3... 50 issue book that was a team up between Cable and Deadpool. That counts yeah. for the 300. Yeah, uh -huh. and it's Mark Brooks, so it's beautiful art. It was, the, it's pretty. a great run. It's, there's Cable a lot of fun in it. Solid. Like I definitely recommend the first arc of one through six because it's that's like that's the the blue church. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. It's one of my favorite Deadpool or Cable runs. It's actually the, the, the one through six is the run that made me like Cable. Uh, I, I didn't that. like Cable as a character until one through six because it showed you how much power he has. It kind of explains like why he's so de de divisive it, uh, and decisive. Honestly, it's, it's one of the things about the Cable character, and we're not. I'm not going to go too deep into it now because. But Cable's where, a whole other episode. Where the, the the notion that Josh Brolin is playing Cable in the movie and also played Thanos, but he played Thanos like Cable. Yeah. Which is a kind of weird. Like, like the take of Th and like I'm not going to spoil anything about the movie, but the take of Thanos in the movie is a very cable take. It's a very this arc take. Yeah, it's very, it's very much, it's very yeah. much the the bearded, bearded, angry dad who's who's here to do what he needs for. I'm for, not mad. I'm disappointed. I'm not mad. I'm in society. In everybody. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like it's kind of perfect that he's playing both characters in kind of a weird way. And, really and that he's playing one of them in a meta universe where they can reference that he plays. Oh my god, it's gonna be so deep. Like yeah. one-eyed Willy, dude. The one-eyed Willy joke while referencing X Men Origins Wolverine is like a fifth wall. <laughs> like they're doing moves from X Men Origins Wolverine, and making fun of the past iteration of the character while making a joke about the other actor's historical role. Like, if you told me that when I was reading Agent X, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, but here's here's what's fascinating <laughs> about this time period is that Deadpool essentially disappears for about a period of about three years. But in those three years, social media becomes a thing, mm. and Marvel doesn't realize what they do when they bring Deadpool back in 2007. Is it Gerard? It's not no, it's not Gerard. Uh, who does? Oh, I should know this. Four. Uh, I think it's Duggan and Pasane, isn't it? No, no Duggan they do. Get they do for volume a five. Years. Um, oh, I know. So this. exciting to be on a character I don't know that well. I really enjoy this. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I mean it. Not like, remember. I cannot remember. I don't remember I'm, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up. Uh, I, I don't even I, have to scan my memory. I know I don't know. <laughs> um, I just read these, but the can, writers are so many. I can make. I can make my fake thinking with faces. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll look it up. But what this one writer does? This uh, was that. Not yet. No, not yet. He's, Jerry Jackson comes in later. It's, it's, to it's the run before then. So good. <laughs> the Dugan and Pusain run and then the Dugan run are some of the best comics. Hard stop. Um, I, ha I have things I'm looking forward to bringing up, so I'm very, yeah. We're getting to the modern day. We're getting to, and we're getting to, like, also, like, a couple of, like, the weird iterations on the end, because, like, I'm a big Gwenpool fan. Oh, I love Gwenpool. We're gonna go I know it's not time yet. It's not time yet. Daniel Way. So hard. Oh, Daniel oh, Way. Daniel yes. Way. And it's good. It's, it's also good. So, for a lot of fans, um, 
Waze run, which would be volume four, uh, starting in 2008. As in, they've renumbered it again, so that's why we're saying volume four. The next yeah. time you go back to number one, it's volume four. And yeah. this run introduces not just breaking the fourth wall, introduces schizophrenia, where yeah. he doesn't just have yellow boxes, he's got teal boxes and blue boxes, and sometimes and, they talk to each other, and, and sometimes they talk to you, oh, and are you and reading a comic? Oh, my and we are using the term schizophrenia in an imprecise medical way, which is a lot of the way they write him with sort of an ambiguous form of Deadpool-specific mental Yeah, it's not, it's not an actual, no, it's, 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 it's all Bugs Bunny. It's, all, it's literally extra heads mm -hmm. growing off, basically, talking to each other. It's angel devil. It's not smart as Legion, but it plays with the concepts yeah. that are the pop culture version of that idea. Nothing is as smart as Legion. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I know. X-Men Legacy 1 through 24? Mm. Um, oh, let me... Nice you you <laughs> Such a good run. I feel like I have... Daniel Way uh, so introduced I, that. I can't believe I forgot this, because this, this was a for a run. while, like, when it stopped being Daniel Way, readers were mad about it. So like, here's... They ended up... They always come around to whatever the new thing is, but, like, I remember that. So here's a just an example of what we're talking about. Uh, I'm sorry I forgot to send this in, Chief. Don't kill me for this. Uh, <laughs> so many shots of our faces holding things in yeah, this episode. Yeah, It's inevitable. Yeah. Um, but here is, there. you get, not the, I was poor and impressed story again. Yeah, try something new this time. I was born a coal miner's daughter. My mother <laughs> never breastfed me. Uh, and, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, you've got narrate, like, you've got comic book narration on top of comic book narration, and maybe one of them's the writer's voice, and, like, one of them's the character's voice, but the then max. the character actually mm -hmm. says something along those lines, or, like, yells at the boxes. Oh, not those yellow boxes again. He says that every once in a while, or he'll be like, I agree with the white box. Like, yeah. He goes back and forth on all of those things. That all starts with Waze Run. And it's such a fun run, because it, it, it pulls you out of any version of reality. Like, there's nothing yeah. in the Way Run that's like, well, this character can totally translate to film, and then they did it. Yeah, <laughs> then they did it. So you get that kind of stuff, but then you also really start getting into... Well, is he uh, Deadpool is a uh, is now known as a pansexual character, or is is oftentimes referred to as that? Who introduced that? I think Way did. I think Way started playing around with that. I think nice. it was Way who started like having him like flirt with Thor, flirt with Spider Man, mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Uh, you start getting that. You start getting him uh, becoming different things or doing different, uh, like uh, breaking the fourth wall in a million different ways, referencing all sorts of different stuff. He starts really making fun of other characters and other comics and commenting on those things in the Daniel Way run. At some point we get Deadpool team up, which is an entire book. Of... Which is, in, and it starts at 900 and counts down. Oh yeah. So Deadpool at 900, the second issue is 899, then 898, then Oh eight, God, seven. why would they do that? <laughs> oh. Spice. Uh, this is also where you get Hit Monkey, which is one of the greatest comic book Hit creations Monkey of all time. Is Hit Monkey recently came back in Dude, in, really? in issue two ninety seven? Oh, Hit Monkey's in there, and they're all talking to Hit Monkey. Throwing yeah. things against the walls that occurs. It is the the reflowering of Deadpool in this era as just like book after book and spinoff after spinoff and mini after mini start coming out with the. It's the most expensive Wade. time in comics since the nineties for me. <laughs> yeah, because I was buying everything that had Deadpool on the cover, That's and at one point I think there was seven. I think there was at one point I was buying seven books that. Just said Deadpool on him, and it was hard, hard to keep. Yeah. Track. So, but it's it's at this time that the Deadpool popularity uh, explodes, mm -hmm. like, and the books take off. And they're like, I, I read a few quotes from. I, I again, I apologize, I don't have them, but I read some quotes from like Marvel editors. They're going, "Yeah, we had no idea. We didn't <laughs> see that coming. We and we still don't fully understand why <laughs> or how." Like, we're like, "Yeah, let's give Deadpool one more chance. Maybe it'll work. If it doesn't, whatever." And, and then it exploded and became one of the biggest things Marvel currently has. Like, he's the new Wolverine for them, you know? And for fans of the movie, and for fans of Ryan Reynolds and all that world, Blade Trinity was also in between these time jumps. On Blade Trinity, on set, Ryan Reynolds was playing a character named Hannibal King. Someone on set, a crew member I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart, said, hey, you're playing this character kind of like Deadpool. To which Ryan Reynolds went, who's Deadpool? And someone handed him a Deadpool comic and thus was born the most important character in pop culture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Ryan Reynolds was given a Deadpool comic on set. It was this Daniel Way run, I think, and it, that's where that voice kind of came from, because, oh, no, it would have been right before that. It would have been, like, oh, 05 or 06, because Blade Trinity's like an iPod commercial. Uh, that time frame. And yeah. he was given that the character, and then that level of self-awareness and fourth wall breaking Ryan Reynolds loved, because if you watch Van Wilder, if you watch his, like, comic sensibilities, and then he kind of started making Hannibal more like Deadpool, and then the craziest thing I heard was that while he was working on Green Lantern, he was writing Deadpool again, 
with the writers. So DC was paying for Deadpool to get written in a very magical way. And I think that's just insane because Green Lantern had all the right pieces. It just didn't land. And I, I love the DC universe's potential. Uh, but I love that he was working on the movie that would bring Fox back on the set of a movie that would kind of stall DC for a while. Yeah. So it's crazy. And this was all around this time frame. So yeah. that was when, because he started working on that movie <laughs> 11 years before the first one came out. So that would have been 2005. Jeez. So 11 years he fought to get that movie made. So around this time period is when the, the man himself discovered that he was born Deadpool. He just had to find the suit to put on. Yeah, he just had to find the suit and the name. He, and just, the had name. To, he yeah. just had to find that Deadpool was who he was. His name is Ryan Rodney Reynolds. He has a written character. That's, oh that is not real life. Is that real? His real name is Ryan Rodney Reynolds. That makes me so happy. He is happy. just short of being a Wade Wilson in real life. Ro like. Ryan Rod. <laughs> uh, but like one of the things that, again, uh, uh, go watch Key Question. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I came across is that people started realizing that Deadpool has become the internet because he is, whatever you're bringing to the character, that's what he becomes. It's very much the, the definition of this sort of like post postmodern uh, uh, reader's response, subjectivity kind of thing. Uh, and that all starts to happen in Daniel Way's run, and that brings us to uh, Jerry Dugan. Can I leap way ahead because it's topical on the internet? Thing. Please. So uh, you may have heard of this uh, brilliant, brilliant man. Oh, yes, man. I was hoping. Perhaps the most brilliant man alive. I'm using a lot of hyperbole today, but I believe it in the sentence. It, it's Donald been that week. Glover. It has been a Donald Glover week. Donald Glover, I think, is perhaps our Renaissance man. He is someone who can write, who can do stand up, who can act, who can sing, who can also rap, rap who yes. can do. Truly unfair number of talents. Yeah. I don't it's, comprehend yeah. what his brain sounds like. He was he was on writing staff at an age where I was still trying to figure out like how I'm gonna get a car. And then quit because, yeah. oh, I don't think I'm uh, uh, stimulated enough anymore. I'll get a lead in the show community, make it better. And then, oh, I'm done with that. Let me try doing hip hop on the side. Oh wait, I'll also do stand up. Oh wait, while I'm at it, I'll reinvent everything you love in pop culture. So this man so. is <laughs> given Deadpool. Now Deadpool, as an we animated described, series, right? Yes. Yeah. For the last yeah. hour and a half, is a character that is multifaceted. So I was like, "Oh, Ryan Reynolds can have a Deadpool that is very much a Ryan Reynolds type iteration. The comics can have this Deadpool. Donald Glover has a Deadpool that is, in my opinion, the way Donald Glover was venting. When I read that 14 pages, to me it felt explain, like explain the audience has no happened. idea what you're talking about. They were gonna make a show. The show got canceled, and apparently Donald Glover was like, <laughs> "Oh Chief, my God, thank you." <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> she wished for more wishes. She Let wished me. for more wishes. She wished for more wishes. Oh. Donald Glover is the kid who wished for more wishes. So, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rewind this to Donald Glover, because Donald Glover is a man who, when Twitter was starting, had a funny tweet that said, Donald for Spider-Man, and it was the idea oh, that he right. should play oh, Spider-Man. Man. Donald Glover has been in the pop culture pinnacle for quite some time. He's up there. But he's never quite gotten the project he should have until Deadpool animated series. So <laughs> Spider-Man was a character he wanted to play. A lot of people thought he should play. I think he could have handled really well. So they invented handled. Miles Morales. Miles Morales is invented because of Donald Glover for Spider-Man. Miles Morales part of it. is part yeah, of it. A, a piece, a, a large piece. So Miles Morales then goes on to be a loved character that Bendis writes. The run is incredible. Bendis like handles this character with a lot He's of- He's created in 2011 in a parallel version of the Marvel Universe. He lives in our universe now. Uh, there was a lot of your typical people arguing and being dumb when he came around, but he uh, has become a, a loved staple. And it's getting his own years. animated thing in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. December we get an, a Miles Morales movie, but what's amazing is in Spider-Man Homecoming, the movie the they made last year. The one that just came out, Spider-Man is a character that has a rich mythology of bad guys. In Ultimate Spider-Man, they reinvent him. In the new Ultimate Spider-Man, which is Miles Morales, which is a parallel universe to a parallel universe, we get <laughs> basically, I mean, to a point. It's no, you're good, you're good. of the same parallel universe, but yes. But they, they veered. Yeah. So when they veered, uh, we got a new Prowler. So mm -hmm. this new Prowler. A character named the Prowler. And Prowler has been around since the 70s. He came back as Aaron Davis. Aaron Davis is the Prowler in this universe who happens to be Miles Morales' uncle. So Spider-Man in this universe, instead of having an Uncle Ben, has an uncle that's a criminal, which is a great reinterpretation on power and responsibility. What's amazing is, in <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming, they cast Donald Glover as the uncle. uncle and in Aaron. that scene, when you see Uncle Aaron, he mentions, I've got a nephew around here. I don't want weapons around like that. He gets his hand webbed to a car. That's license plate says, Ultimate Spider-Man number one, which is the first parents of Miles Morales. And he breaks the fourth wall by slightly looking at camera, which is amazing because that acknowledges his character being aware of the universe he's in. So, Donald Glover is a <laughs> meta-aware human who really, really knows what the internet feels like, in fact, wrote an album called Because of the Internet, which is basically like a Bowie Prince 
feel of atmosphere, but with today's sensibilities by way of hip hop. And if you listen to it while reading a script he wrote, you experience the album completely differently <laughs> because there are stories that only have answers while listening to the music at the, at the exact same time. So imagine doing lots of acid and listening to Dark Side of the Moon, but you don't have to because you can read a script, trip balls, and listen to Because of the Internet. And then there are memes about it that reference more layers to it. So it's like watching a soap opera 10 times, growing up with it, and then rediscovering that that was your grandma. So. What's amazing is <laughs> Donald Glover. Coy is his own grandfather, continue. <laughs> so Donald Glover is the perfect person to write Deadpool because of all those things are like he's been in and out of this world. So I think the script he wrote as a fire. We firing. still haven't told him what that is. Uh, there was going to be <laughs> an you, animated Thank Deadpool you. show on FX. Uh, and we don't know exactly what happened, but they announced that they were no longer moving forward with that series. And then some rumor surfaced that said that he liked that they were behind or he didn't have time or something like that. And Donald Glover was like, oh, I had time. And then as far as we can tell, just just sat down and wrote a full episode of television and put it on the internet. Like, I mean, like how quick, like... Within six hours of it being public, he released a thing saying, oh, no, no, I wasn't too busy. And I also heard that while he was playing Lando, he was working on the Deadpool script, flying back and forth to work with his brother, who made a little show called Atlanta that changed television and is perfect. Uh, so they were going to next work on a show called Deadpool, which would have been from the team that did Archer animating, and then they teaming up to handle the writing duties. And it was so self-aware that in the firing letter, he wrote a 14-page script in less than a day because everything in the script had happened in the last 24 hours. And at one point, it references... It was the script equivalent of holding up the newspaper in a photograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I can do. So the script references the last the white rhino that had just died as the plot device. It's Deadpool with this last white rhino. It talks about the presidency. It talks about uh, Donald Glover himself. It talks about him being sick of pop culture. It is... The most, it's like Daniel Way meets Jerry Dugan plus the original And you, and you can Kelly find stuff. it on the internet. And find the last, there, the, yeah. the 14 pages, uh, it would have been the best cartoon ever. Or a mess, or great. Or a mess. <laughs> and, or perfect. Like Deadpool. And yeah. a mess. And great. And that everything that you just around. witnessed is uh, why we're all friends with Corey. Yeah. <laughs> I just lost I'm, 800 Twitter followers. I'm like, this man <laughs> has lost his mind. I'm Donald Glover, Donald Glover, like a tattoo. Like, Donald Glover. I'm glad that the internet finally got to experience what we experience in real life with him. This is no, me on chat, one chat, coffee chat at is, eight Chat is with you. Chat is with you powerfully. Oh, yeah, yes. You're, you're yeah. not really wrong about anything. Okay, uh, thank you. And I get worried when I get hyped. But we, we, should get, we should make sure we get to Jerry Duggan. Yeah, yeah. because we've only got about 15 minutes. And in so. the meantime, you had Devil Kills the Marvel Universe, Devil Kills the Marvel Universe again, Classics Illustrated, Deadpool. Uh, <laughs> I, Deadpool I, Illustrated, I think. Deadpool is Illustrated, right? yeah, which is a retelling of classic literature with Deadpool in it, like Moby like Dick. Like Moby Dick, yep. Like, imagine my mixed feelings in that one. I'm like, <laughs> damn it, I'm really glad this exists. And, a and, Deadpool team-up, which was a classic take on the team-up book, which was at that time mostly dead, which was a fun, wonderful romp of new characters. You get uh, Lady Deadpool, Headpool, Dogpool, uh, dog pool, <laughs> Gwenpool. Like, Gwenpool, 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 soon. Soon. Gwenpool. We're, soon. We're not quite there. All right, I'm holding. He uh, Headpool uh, and them are a different generation. Okay, then yeah. Gwenpool comes in right around the time. Uh, now, Duggan and, uh, Dugan and Poussein uh, write the book together for a while. Yeah. And they start Brian out with... Brian is a comedian. Jerry Dugan, I think, also a comedian. Mm -hmm, but, um, the... but they both, they jump into comics with both feet. Uh, and Jerry Duggan, I believe, is now a lifer. He's writing this summer's Infinity Invent. And Fantastic um, Four. Yeah. Oh, really? oh isn't he? With the Dan beard? Slott's writing. Oh, Dan Slott, right. The other, that was the other big changeover. You're right. Yeah. Uh, so I love that... The, he's the been two... writing Guardians. We actually, this is around the time oh, yes. this moment happens. So, so one of the things I love about about Deadpool, and one, one of the things that happens with Deadpool, and one of the things that, that brought me back into the character is, is that he started getting shoved on teams like he was some kind of Wolverine, uh, where you could just he they put him on uh, they put him on uh, the Thunderbolts for a little while, <laughs> weirdly, and that was an interesting but weird run. Uh, and one of the things they did is they, re, they restarted the X-Force books. But Which this they've was done a, several times, but this is one of our very favorites. This was an interesting take. This was uh, 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 Rick uh, uh, Remender, and uh, he came in and kind of made... Jerome Pena. A, a sexy, like, kind of like... He brought, he brought the sex and violence to X-Force in a way that is kind of very much my style. But not yeah. the same as the miniseries X-Force Sex no, and Violence, and which preceded it. Which preceded it. Where this was just kind of, this was a little bit more of a James Bondy kind of vibe. And one of the things they, they did is they put Deadpool on this team. And he was still funny and he was still kooky, but he, they, they didn't really have him breaking the fourth wall on mm -hmm. these teams quite as much. They just sort of, you experience Deadpool the way that the rest of the Marvel Universe experiences Deadpool. Less as an audience member of Deadpool, but more as a person in, the, in these books. So they kind of toned him down a bit. Yeah. 
But, but one the question of the, we both had is like, can he work in a book where you're taking things seriously? And it turns out to our great surprise, yes. And like this is just <laughs> like, and like this is just like the page where I fell in love with him utterly, which which was Archangel, I this character on this on this team. Uh, they're fighting the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's a really good book. I highly recommend it. It's very, it's dark and cool. We used cool. to say it was everything that you thought the 90s felt like, but actually as cool right, as you yeah. thought it was. <laughs> it was um, someone doing the 90s right. Yeah, yeah no, very much. And, someone doing the 90s right. And, and Ar Archangel has been attacked by one of the four horsemen by famine, who had the power in this book to basically make all of the food and all of the nutri nutritional value of your body disappear. And so he just point at you and you would die of starvation in like minutes and dehydration. And so Archangel is literally a corpse on the ground and, and Deadpool has been basically finding food for him, going through his sack of weird Mexican condiments, feeding him <laughs> like then, crap. And then he's still feeding him and it's just this really sweet kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's Deadpool, but very, very, and then you find out like, where did you get this food? And remember that Deadpool can survive any injury He's literally cutting chunks of himself off to keep him alive. It's so uh, gross. No, it's so and it's twisted. So but it's gross. But it's like, oh the my! Most loving. That's thing. just like this weirdly loving moment, and it's and it's everything that I like. It's everything I really love about the character is that it is this silly. Um, it's it's silly and it's fun, but it's not irreverent. Like. It's 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 reverent it's reverent silliness. He's so to. much heart that he sacrifices everything for the good of others after he realizes how bad of a person he is. Like he's, yeah. he's a mercenary that realizes like, oh, I don't want to kill people. And you go on that journey of self discovery. The first hundred issues are him being like, I'm a merc. No, I'm not. I'm a merc. No, I'm not. And then you get to the point where that stuff happens. You also get to the point where he finds out he has a daughter and does everything he can for yep. her. You also find out through through these team ups like the things he's done for people that he hides. He doesn't talk about. Like he's I don't know. He's such a he's such a most heroes brag about being heroes or they're modest about it, but they're still like, well, I donated to charity. He's like the opposite. And that's such a powerful figure in comics that we don't get a lot. The killing of the zombie presidents. Is like such that a, whole, oh, yeah, that's the first arc in that. And we also, uh, this was around the time we didn't mention after the first movie came out, Deadpool, Tony Stark doesn't have money anymore. Deadpool's, all the Deadpool merch that you buy in the comics is canon. And he makes so much money that he funds the Avengers. Yeah, so Deadpool, right. Deadpool right. is so rich that he's funding the Avengers with and the he's merch that is real life. Yeah, he's funding the the Avengers with the merch that you would go out and buy. And like, he's also you actually go out and buy it. He can now fund the Avengers in the comics because he's so rich. And he's so busy, he hires a team of people to dress like Deadpool to go out and do like hero stuff. You so all the Rainbow doing. Deadpools. Yeah, the Rainbow. Uh, he essentially does Batman Incorporated, but Deadpools. Deadpool. Yep. It's just such a rich character that it, people see as one thing, and like this little moments like that really. Oh, show it, that, that that shook me. Like yeah. that, this whole book is great, and yep. with, this is all the child apocalypse stuff. Yeah. And, and it's. And that was like the moment of like I, I totally get how this kid how this yeah you know, kid apocalypse is amazing. And that's one of the if you're if you're this is kind of a spoiler uh, for the current books. It was like a year ago actually. Uh, basically, Cable Strife comes back and says, "Hey, I've ruined everything in your life. I've poisoned all these people. They're gonna die unless you kill three people for me." And one of them is Kid Apocalypse. So he has to go around killing. He has to kill mm -hmm. Cable. Has to kill, and it's it's this brutal thing where he's back to just being a merc. It's how people think of the character. So it does this amazing thing where you're like, oh, this is what people think the character is, and that's how they're writing him, but he's dealing with this. It's, it's beautiful. We've so, got, yeah, uh, we've got a few other things, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I don't know what else. Like, I'm kind of like, I've exhausted everything that I wanted to say about it, except for one more thing, and it's, it's Jerry Dugan's. I think this is. I think it's going to be volume. We should mention that we're celebrating today the final issue of his run, which is by weird coincidence. I think we picked this date because the movie's coming out next week. But today is the day that Deadpool 300, which is when they went back, did some shenanigans with math, and decided what it would be <laughs> if it had happened. Uh, they were like, Sounds it's good. more or less 300. Uh, so they've been counting up towards this. There's going to be a new number one where Jerry Duggan, who has now written, according to the inside of that book, more issues than anybody else. According to uh, him inside that yeah, book. Yeah. We assume fictional Jerry Duggan is telling us the truth. Uh, he's moving on to, to other books, and uh, Scotty Young of I Hate Fairyland is taking over. So oh, that should be fun. Oh, my God. Uh, Next month, I think, right? That's perfect. I'm going to guess yes. yes. Oh, wow, it's June. Um, with a new oh. number one, which will be, whatever, volume six? Yeah. Whatever, seven. They've Probably, renumbered a couple uh, more numbers in the middle. So uh, Jerry Dugan, I, uh, I'm not, again, I, I'm a little fuzzy on what volume this actually is. That shield lady, that's his good friend. I like her. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, she's great. Um, issue number 20 is one of the most powerful comic books I've ever read. It made me cry out loud in my office when I was doing research for the, for the show. Um, it's 
Jerry Dugan had, uh, had always wanted to do like a poignant, like show just how much heart and soul and poignance Deadpool has. And he wanted to tackle the, uh, so, uh, uh, what's it called, trigger war? Like, careful uh, with this. Uh, but um, he addressed suicide in ah. issue number 20. Mm -hmm. And it starts off with kind of a, a play on um, Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman, where he, like, goes up and stops the jumper. It's that whole thing. And it starts off with a girl on a ledge and then a close-up of her, and you just see, don't jump, off, off the side. Then he says, please, not here. Parker Industries is just a few blocks there. That's the sort of address that you can, find, that you can fling yourself to death at. And she goes, you're making jokes? And he goes, I was bitten by a sad radioactive clown. But <laughs> she, like, she starts dialoguing with him because of the jokes. And he, is, he basically says, just come with me tonight. If you still want to go and kill yourself, I can't stop you. That's your decision. I'm not going to take that away from you. But just give me a couple hours because I'm making some rounds and trying to make life better for some people. And she goes with him as he goes and, like, tries to save people from, like, uh, uh, being, like, beat up by their, their – like, he, he essentially says something along the lines of, whenever I'm not doing work with the Avengers or X-Force or whatever else, I, I have a list of, like, little bitty things that still need to be addressed. Uh, like gun, run, like people running guns and selling drugs and like beating up the elderly, stuff like that. So I'm going to go stop all those little bitty things. Go with me on my small task night. And he causes as much trouble as he, as he solves, but she has a lot of fun with him. And at the end of the night, he pulls up to um, like a, a, a psychiatric hospital kind of like place, but like uh, it deals with suicide. Mm -hmm. And he pulls up on his scooter and she goes, oh my God, what are we doing here? And she's actually enjoying herself. And she's got a big smile on her face. And she's like, oh my God, what are we doing? What are we doing? What, what do we get to go in and do here? And let me, let me go to it. Uh, sorry, I should have had this pulled up. And um, he says, um, listen, I don't think you're crazy. You just need a little help. And I'm not the guy to help you. And then he walks her into the hospital and she, she like walks away and she's like, you can see that she's sad, but she's actually really grateful for what Deadpool did for her. And then he says, I'm killing someone is way harder than what I usually do. And then he says, of course, the moment she walks out of my life, I think of the perfect advice. You gotta remember, no matter how bad things get, that life is fluid. There's always the chance that something great is waiting right around the next corner. You just have to find a way to keep rounding corners. Oh, that's a Deadpool. Wow! Book. And then it ends with Jerry directly, like it's a—it's not a letters column. It's him saying, uh, "There are all-star heroes that can save a life with a single word balloon." And then there's Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> He'll say something. Will it be helpful? Probably not. I laughed at the thought of Deadpool confronted with a suicidal character. I spent the last, few fear, the last few years trying to do unexpected things with Wade, but even I had to admit that that poor character probably wasn't going to make it. I immediately discarded the idea. There are easier Deadpool stories to tell. Then I changed my mind. I had this guilty feeling that I had sold Deadpool short. Besides, funny and sad is my sweet and sour. Maybe this would be a perfect Deadpool comic. I had no idea how he was going to succeed in saving a suicidal character, but I was determined to find out. When I wrapped the script, I, had to, I also had to admit that I could do no better than Deadpool. Nothing is more frustrating than not having the perfect words when you feel you need them most. That's really what this story is about when words fail. Wow. And then he gives the suicide hotline. What's the number? 1-800-273-TALK, uh, 8255. Um, so uh, sorry to bring up suicide, uh, uh, but... Um, you were clear about it. Yeah. And that's I was clear about story. it, and like I, again, I, I want to put out there like I actively struggle every day with suicidal depression. So like this issue really spoke to me. So yeah, and it's like it's fucking Deadpool. <laughs> he should not work. It should not work. He's, he's not Mountain uh, Dew. He's not Mountain Dew. But he's so much richer it than look, it looks anyone like weird gives for me us to be credit like, for. I think I was a snob. It smelled like <laughs> no, for we've real. All, he, we've all been there. We've all been there. There's actually, I, I mean, like, in, in, all, in, in my attempt chat. to segue out of that intense intensity from chat, 
I, I, I retweeted a thing today because it's not off topic, I swear, like the 10th anniversary of the Speed Racer, the Wachowski <laughs> Speed Racer film. Brilliant. Yeah, I and, retweeted that because yeah. I didn't know you were one of us. No, oh man. Oh, I love that it's movie. It's deep. <laughs> another, I know. another. It's, and, and there's, there's a, and uh, uh, the, the Crit Joe Hulk Star, yeah, did, did, a, did a great review of it. Uh, Wait, and, Crit Hulk did? Yeah, it's a great review. And one of the things he talks <laughs> about is, is this notion, especially that you have when you're young, with the idea of, of what means when something is mature, is that the things that make something good, if something that, if the things that make something good are corny or silly, that it's the mature thing to do is to make it, is to drop those things. And that's what makes something adult. He's like, this is absolutely not true. Hmm. This is a this is a child's view of adulthood. The child's view of, of 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 Batman is that it should be as grim as humanly possible because that's Batman without all the silly stuff. But that's not Batman. And then an adult can walk over and go, No, Adam West is a very viable Batman because I'm I'm a mature enough adult to know that that there's more than one flavor of food. And this is what makes life more complex when you're older is that everything is on the table and not the like. I, I, you know, not that like we can we can have comic book movies only if we get rid of the spandex and get rid of the humor and make sure that everything is serious. Superman is serious, and you're like, but that's not Superman. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna read that review. Yeah, no, it's a great review, and it, and it's a lot about this is part of my problem with Deadpool. Is I thought I was, I thought I was too much of a grown up for Deadpool. So my three briefly. Because I, I went through, I, upon reading all of this and my 25 years of reading Deadpool, I wanted to give you guys my top three arcs after much thought, deliberation, Bring hundreds it. and hundreds. They've of been times. asking. My top three are all recent, so they're easy to find. Uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is a great book if you want to see Deadpool as a team that is an X-Force. It is mm. Captain America, Wolverine, and Deadpool go to North Korea because a bunch of North Koreans have been enslaved and basically force-fed Deadpool's genes, and they become this really sad hodgepodge faux X-Men, but they're rotting and dying the whole time, and Deadpool Ooh. has to go on a rescue mission with Wolverine and Cap to save these poor... It's basically an internment camp, and it's, like, such a dark, depraved book, but with the humor of Deadpool and the heart of Deadpool. So it's a great, like, here's four issues that you can see what the both sides of Deadpool are. Uh, my second uh, is the Spider-Man Deadpool first arc, one through six, mm. which they is... They have a team book. They have a book together that's been is running that the one that, uh, for, like, 28... So this is the... Is that the one where Hit, like Hit Monkey comes in? No, no, that's uh, volume two. Uh, so this... Or volume two or three. So this uh, image is the cover. Uh, this image is a tattoo I'm getting on my forearm. <laughs> Uh, because this... Uh, been talking about it for a while. <laughs> I have. I, I haven't found the right artist. Uh, so, basically, my idea is that the yin and yang of Deadpool, which is what I think that represents, is you either die as Spider-Man or you live long enough to become, become a Deadpool. Deadpool. So, the idea is that you either realize that the world isn't just power and responsibility, and that's almost an idealized, childlike version of the world. Like, some responsibility you can't shoulder forever. Sometimes power and responsibility is enough to use the world. Sometimes things just suck. And sometimes you gotta say fuck a lot to get through it. And sometimes you gotta be kind of an asshole. And I love that Deadpool is I'm an sure asshole. I believe any of those things. That's the, I love you, man. <laughs> that, that's, that's, the, that's the version my, of reality my, I see. Like, my, my, my favorite thing was like listening to Koi going, okay, I see that point. I see that point. I and see then that suddenly point. you're like, but then, but then seeing Amy the whole time going, no. <laughs> so. well, I started with like, yeah, the world sucks sometimes. Peter Parker knows this. <laughs> For me, Deadpool represents when you've been pushed too far, uh -huh. and you're still a good person, but the things you've had to do. So the idea I want is the yin-yang of Spider-Man yeah. Deadpool with that art, and that is from the we first We haven't arc. even mentioned also that, like, uh, that ship is now a hardcore thing. Oh, yeah, the, oh, yeah. the love of those two. And Spider-Man deals with Deadpool a lot. Sometimes, like, you're a great hero, and Deadpool's like, oh! So uh, these two characters in their first uh, team book together culminates in a dirty dancing reference that features Jane Foster's Thor okay. and some of the most powerful imagery of bromance. Like, it breaks through, like, bros being romantically involved and loving each other in a way that doesn't pander. And, like, the pansexuality plays so well where you're like, Spider-Man's a straight guy, but he totally get Deadpool loves him. And he knows he's not platonic, but he's cool with it. And then they <laughs> dance in their underwear, and Deadpool has Spider-Man underwear. It is beautiful. Oh. It's, it's Ed McGinnis art. It is oh, Joe oh. Kelly writing. Oh, yeah, that went eight issues, and then the regular, the ongoing started, and that's the one that's And that's what's current 35. Yeah. And the Christmas special of that book is Paul Shear, who's brilliant. And the Christmas special, we found out that it is in the contracts that Spider-Man can never hold a beer because he had a trouble writing them in the bar because he can't physically be in the same frame as beer. Anyway, uh, so that is my <laughs> second favorite. And my third favorite is in the all-new Wolverine book, which is... All-New Wolverine is a shockingly incredible book. It's so good! It's great. Mm -hmm. 
And Deadpool makes an appearance. I don't know if you've read it. I don't think I've read that one. Deadpool comes in because X-23 is the only one that can save this island that's been contaminated with a horrible alien virus. An alien lands and just ruins this thing with the bacteria no one can stop. So X-23 starts walking through and absorbing it while she's dying. She's like being a martyr and she can't contain it all. So Deadpool comes in and Deadpool starts joining on and they hold on like kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy and absorb all the radiation. And the beautiful thing about that book, not only the heart, but he befriends the little Wolverine. Uh -huh. and oh, uh, uh, honey, honey, badger? Honey, honey Badger. And Honey Badger and them, they have the same sense of humor. So they just both oh, start God, telling like do. dick and fart jokes and running around. And Honey Badger's favorite person in the world is Wolverine. And Wolverine, the Wolverine hates Deadpool. So there's this weird little trifecta of that writing, which is beautiful. So those are my three. Uh, also, if you are watching this and you're not following me on Twitter, I will talk to Deadpool until my ears This bleed. is true. So, by all means, we'll continue this conversation on the web. Uh, a, a couple more things to mention that are a lot of fun. Gwenpool. I know I've been pushing Gwenpool yes. the entire... Fantastic. Um, which, Explain Gwenpool. Uh, she's a lot. Gwenpool's a lot. Gwenpool is basically a character from our universe. She's she's a avid comic book reader who sort of got pulled into the comic book universe. So while she has Deadpool's understanding of, of that this is just a comic book narrative, she also knows the entire narrative because she was a comic book reader. And this started out as, and like I keep remembering and then forgetting this, but it was essentially, she was just an image. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a month <laughs> where there were a bunch of variant covers that was like, Gwen is everything, because she was having this moment. It was it was uh, Gwen month, yeah. 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 Uh, so it was like this this Captain America Gwen and Venom Gwen and like all this other stuff. Uh, and one of them was like Gwenpool. Uh, and then essentially, so it's the DNA of Spider Gwen and Deadpool, but she's neither of those characters. No. So they gave her backup stories in Howard the Duck. Uh, and then... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gwenpool. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> she often references her lack of pants, which yeah. I enjoy. They reference the weird, like, superhero costumes. Yep. Her biggest power is knowing everyone's secret identity in the first arc. She, I, there was a holiday special, which was actually secretly like a She-Hulk issue, but it had a bunch of great Gwenpool stuff in it. Uh, and then she went on to get her own series, which is just wrapping up after like two and a half years mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, she summer. literally breaks out of frame in the last arc. Like, there's, there's frames where you're reading, and she moves like, the frame and the frame acknowledges around. the world. It's amazing. It's 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 another. It's a different type of self-referential. It's a lot of fun. It's it's a it's a different flavor. Yeah, uh, there, the there we are. Gwenpool. Gwenpool. It's got it's it's got its very own sensibility that is not Deadpool. And I, I went in expecting Deadpool and was very surprised by what I got. It's a lot warmer. It is warmer. But it's also does... violent and <laughs> terrible. But but great. on the barometer of Deadpool, warmer's yeah. warmer. Warmer's warmer. <laughs> it's 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 got like it's got a bit of like. Japanese anime magical girl vibe kind of wrapped into it too yeah. where there's just this under this love of like of just the, the, I, the I sheer know I know what you mean when you say that yeah. which means I've learned something from our show oh, yeah. it feels really I'm nice. so proud Aww. I was like oh I know what they're talking about and I then there's there's this Yay! So this came out today. This is the this. ultimate cover for number two. He's got number one over there. This is number one. Yeah. Uh, this is genius. I haven't I haven't read it yet. I I, I started. Would you guys like to uh, play some Deadpool comics? Deadpool Deadpool made made a playable game uh, now, out of we, a comic we've, book. We've made a couple references too that there are there have been some choose your own adventure stories that we love very much. Uh, my 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 fave Ryan North has made kind of an art form out of doing these uh, and. Uh, the latest thing to sort of take tap into that is the currently running You Are Deadpool series uh, with, with numbered panels and the, very much the like go-to panel X if blah, blah, blah. And I just thought that this would be fun if they, I haven't checked the content appropriateness. But uh, <laughs> we can technically it's, do this with y'all. Yeah, it's, it's technically, it, it is literally a choose-your-own-adventure comic book where you just go to whatever panel they tell you to and it even references... Okay, a, I love this. Oh. Welcome, reader. Welcome to an interactive comics experience, the likes of which you've probably seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? I'm the genre-defying Deadpool, or rather, you are, because you'll be dictating my every action. Which of multiple endings will you lead me to? Will I bathe luxuriously in the hot springs of glory, or haplessly wash my junk in the freezing bidet of ignominy? <laughs> or will I be eaten by plus three gelatinous cube? It's all up to you, because you, you are, are Deadpool. Deadpool. Look, he's got minis. He's got minis. Uh, and I find that significant. Oh, yeah, and like the first page is a character sheet. Oh, well, there we are. Oh, oh yeah. it's worth noting as this dives in, in the movie Deadpool, there are dog pool statues, there are Deadpool action figures, there are X-Men Origins Wolverine. So the movie carries on this menace, and it all exists in one universe where Deadpool knows he's Deadpool. I, I love it. Yeah, and they even, he even referenced page, uh, occasionally that like you would skip a panel, and you go, oh, I wonder what was on that panel. I guess it's not important now. <laughs> and like, 
Yeah, and it's very, it's, it's, I like, I read this really late last night, right, but, uh, like, as I was falling asleep, and it was hard to hold it's on. A good dream state. It was, mm -hmm. it was a lot. And then you have, you have your cut out your die, and then there's, yeah, there's a, there's dice that you cut out, because sometimes, yeah. Should we let them make a couple choices? Do we have time? Uh, that's uh, a, uh, uh, no, we have like two minutes to really start yeah. wrapping things up. I know. Because we need to do our topic. As much as I love also, my We got to do the North. topic. Who's, who gets credit for this, though, since we're shouting it out? Writer Al Ewing. Al Ewing is great. Yeah. Uh, artist Sala Espin. Color by Gore Effects. Mm, yep. Oh, background. Yeah, it's the character sheet. Yeah. Name, Deadpool. Class, very little. <laughs> Alignment, chaotic sassy. Background, yeah. Deadpool, a.k.a. Wade Wilson, is a level three mercenary with weapons mastery, amazing. Unarmed combat, incredible. Sad clown syndrome, melancholy. <laughs> Healing factor, shift X. And nasty face, shift X. <laughs> he may or may not be a very tall hobbit. <laughs> Currently, he's chilling at home, waiting for you to turn the page and begin the tutorial. Rules. Did I mention the tutorial? We put a lot of work into the tutorial. If you want the rules, you should probably play through it. I mean, you can skip it if you like, but it's your dollar. You should familiarize yourself with the boxes below, too. You'll be using them to keep stuff in. Sadness oh. score. Badness score. Oh, my God. Inventory. And inventory. And inventory. So, presumably, uh, as issue to issue, you can keep track of that, uh, because you are dead. Okay, cool. I am highly entertained by this. And this is an alternate cover for number two based on the old Marvel superheroes, so I had to grab yeah, it. Yeah, so. no, I feel that. Um, Marvel so, Superheroes RPG, I didn't say that word. Is it, is it time for our five uh, minute? It, it, it is time, but I should point out that my, my mom texted me saying that my uh, niece, Caitlin, her uh, volleyball team is called the Honey Badgers. She was yes! very, yes! very and excited. That's so on brand for our uh, Wolverine yeah. talk. Probably not mm. related to the Laura Kinney sidekick character. Probably right? not. Probably not. So. Oh, Doubtful, but that would be amazing. If it were. That would be amazing. All those uh, girls love Wolverine. All right, so. It is time for our uh, five-minute one-shot uh, topic. Uh, do we have it? Or are we, we ready? We have our topic. We are ready. All right. Let me, uh, let me do the introduction. Do your, do our introduction, man. Right hey, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday Club. You can watch us on Geek and Sundry's Twitch channel every Wednesday night at 7 or on projectalpha.com. Uh, anytime. Wednesday nights at 7 are great, but watch us live on, on Twitch instead. Uh, or or on Project <laughs> Alpha, that's great. That's great too. Keep thinking. Yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, Matt Key, Coy Andrew, uh, Amy Dallant, and uh, Talison Jaffe. Talison, tell us what our winning topic is. Our topic topic comes from Alpha from uh, 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 Jarkfin, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. And the topic is Deadpool has to host a late night talk show. Oh Jesus. Who does he con to be his sidekick, house band, and guests and first guests? Wait, you uh, have five are, are they are they all comic book characters? I, why are you asking me this? Side man, Donald Glover called it. Oh. But he's a different persona every time. He comes in as a different band. Sometimes oh. he just sends other people to pretend to be Donald Glover. So um, he comes in like he's Childish Gambino for sometimes. one episode, yeah. but then another episode he's he's, he's the he's, soul singer and like yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I'm that's, on board that's for my that. okay. house band. Re repeat the question. Okay. Oh yeah, late night talk show with Deadpool has who's who's the sidekick, the house band, and the first guest. Sidekick, house band, first guest. Yeah, no, you gotta oh, go with it. Oh god. Uh, sidekick for me is Ryan Reynolds uh, because he's oh, aware man. that Ryan Reynolds also plays him, but they interchange and he's very. He, he, it's a happy. It's an actual team up. It's a sidekick, but he's also the lead when he wants to be. So I, he I feel that. Because I feel like Deadpool would want to take breaks all the time. So who'd want? You know, he wants Ryan, to, Ryan Reynolds cool. really just wants to be dead. Oh, you know, it's real. Uh, Howard the Duck would be his side, his, his side person. Yes. His side duck. His Excellent. side kick. Like uh, his, his uh, Andy Richter, like, man, yeah, yes, uh, Deadpool's got jokes all day. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. I, I, That's a terrible Howard, I know. I mean, like, immediately my first thought is, is, is you can get, you can get like, like, a little bit of, like, you can get Dazzler, like, at least as the first musical guest. I yeah. Think yeah. Oh, she should be involved. Oh, that's, totally. that's totally fair. Oh, he would be all about that, too. He'd be too. about Dazzler. Oh, could, is, does B. Arthur count? Could he get B. Arthur yes, on? I'm ruling yes. As first guest. First as guest, first guest. First guest, Hugh Jackman, the man. And they talk about <laughs> why he wouldn't make an X-Men uh, again to do Logan and Deadpool team up and why he retired right as Deadpool existed. And he comes out, Deadpool comes out wearing Hugh Jackman's face a la the first movie to make fun of him not joining the franchise. That would be amazing. That's pretty solid. I, I mean, like, yeah, these are all... Pretty this good. Is, this is almost too viable. Uh, that's almost too viable. The band would be Salt and Peppa, but one of the singers is DMX. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, it'd be Salt and right. Because Deadpool? Salt and X. Oh my yeah. god. It'd be Salt Pepper X. <laughs> yeah. It would like, they, they, they you... called Agent X. Yeah. It, 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 uh, all the greatest back. hits from Shoop, 
two X gun give it to you, and we finally find out where the hood is at. <laughs> I've been wondering for years. I want to know. <laughs> I'm yeah. here for it. Uh, this may be the topic that finally broke us. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it took this he topic in Koi. Spider Man on every night. It'd be the yeah, Matt Damon joke. It'd be the Matt Damon joke where the end's like, sorry guys, we didn't have time for Spider Man. Spider-Man, but there'd you, be but a sadness no in his eyes that he couldn't get him because he just didn't show up, but he'd pretend <laughs> that they actually ran out of time, so the Matt Damon joke. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm oh, feeling that. And Dogpool that would be the really Dogpool funny. would be the Dog, DMX yeah. uh, barking. Dogpool would be with the band. Well, he, while he would be DMX like bark. do like funny funny animal tricks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like Deadpool would be all about funny animal tricks. Headpool's definitely on the desk. Headpool is the main fixture. DMX plus Salt and Pepper's the band. First guest is Logan, and I want this to. I, I, I'm, I'm like, I feel like this is actually writing a comic book right now. I don't, I feel like this is this is cute and all, but I Jerry actually Dugan, really want to see this. Jerry Dugan, we know you're watching. Um, oh, Jerry Dugan would obviously have to guess. Oh yeah, oh, fantastic. Yeah, I, I, every single writer ever for Deadpool would have to guest on Deadpool. I think they would be show. in the band, but like, but like in the back of the yeah. band, like yeah. Rob Liefeld, but. Yeah drawn like Rob Liefeld. So it's the voice of Rob Liefeld, but it looks like a Liefeld drawing, so he comes out large-chested and small-angled. Well, yeah. no, he and, and also and has a tremendous sense of humor about these things. Oh, yeah. He came and out Rob today, Liefeld. and he loves that. He literally came out and posed with the cap chest and talked oh. about it, and then he talked about pouches. So covered in pouches, also everyone in the audience went, has to wear pouches. When I went back to reread the first ones, I really wish that I was like, <laughs> we were not exaggerating this in our memories. The entire no. back of him is pouches. <laughs> Just pouches. <laughs> Just so many pouches. Yeah. Uh, Catering is always Mexican food. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, the Hell's Band is called the Chimichangas. <laughs> yeah, no, that's very. Uh, but I, I don't know who's on it. I, I'm. Oh, I mean, uh, like Marty. Occasional guest hosting from Honey Badger. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. She has a segment, like a recurring segment. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, it, what it, you said, Dazzler. Dazzler is is is, is an instant musical guest star. I mean, yeah. Did easy. you did you have a musical guest? I can't remember. Mine is Donald Glover. Donald yeah. Glover. That's right. You started band. with that. That's he'd right. Be performance and you're, you're Salt and Pepper X. Agent X. I don't, that's the last one that I have. Uh, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, Lila Cheney? I, uh, oh, yes. I mean, uh, uh, if, if for no other reason to put, oh, you know to what? put strong You know what he back. would do? He, I, think, I think Deadpool would uh, find a way to get, like, Modoc to, like, play keyboard <laughs> as, like, the house band. Mental organism designed only for keyboard. Board. For oh, keyboard. Oh, yes. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. One last addition. Bring it. The people watching are all watchers because he breaks the fourth wall by acknowledging, <laughs> by acknowledging that everything he does is so important that the galaxy is affected by it, and then the warm-up band is Stan Lee because it all starts with Stan. Yeah. Oh, my God. He just comes out and goes, Excelsior! Every time. Uh, anyway, sure. hey, everybody, thank you for watching. <laughs> we're out of time. We're out we of just time. Wrote in, we just wrote that comic. Uh, this has been uh, Wednesday Club uh, One Shot, uh, Five Minute One Shot. Uh, I am Matt Key. I'm Coy John Rowe. Amy Dallin. I'm Deadpool. Tell us <laughs> Thanks for watching, Thank and uh, for join us next week. All right, we've got three minutes left. You've given your recommendations. Uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up. Um, well, I mean, like, there's there's a lot to wrap up. I mean, just just I mean, like, I've got to say that like there's you you gave some really good recommendations where to start. I'm definitely going to make some some noise for Uncanny X Force: The Apocalypse Solution, mm -hmm. which is available. It's it's not a good first Deadpool book, but if you're looking for like a little bit of a bridge and you're a big X Men fan, especially it's like Psylocke, Wolverine, Phantom X, who I'm just. I'm just stupid about because I love Phantom X. <laughs> uh, of course you love it's Phantom X. It's a good yes. one. I know. I, I'm well aware I'm He's that guy. He's quite in a nice suit. Like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what Deadpool run I really loved was the uh, the Hitmonkey one. Like, I, I brought it up earlier. <laughs> yeah. But, like, Deadpool teaming up with Spider-Man, Spider-Man hating it every single second, but then later on discovering... I, I actually need Deadpool. Like this really actually sucks. Mm -hmm. But then you get this amazing villain in Spider er, and uh, in Hit Monkey, who's like a legitimately threatening Hitman, but he's just a monkey. Yep. And it's like such he's a Deadpool sunglasses. comic. It's so great. It's and, great. Uh, like, he can only exist there. Like, and that it, character I think doesn't it's like make sense. it's only four or six issues. It's a really fast read. Like if you need a place to start with Deadpool, I, that's a high. Like I highly suggest that one. And for jumping on, almost any of the number ones in the last 10 years really are a good mm -hmm. place. Because yeah. if you start in Daniel Way's number one or either of Duggan's rejumps, then you'll really get a taste for Because they, they do a good review. They good, do a good dive in. And uh, it, I'm not going to spoil it because it just came out today, but the end of this comic ends very well for the new number one to take off. So it's a fantastic time to read Deadpool. So I suggest you do. Uh, <laughs> that was going here's what happens if you ignore the instructions for You Are Deadpool. 
Uh, at the end of the number six goes to go back and choose again, go to five. If you've got to do it now, got it now, go to nine. Don't read on. If you go to number seven, he goes, ah, I'm adrift in time. Events are happening out of order. Why did we not follow simple instructions? Go to 11. <laughs> and on this page, there's a lovely cutout exercise. So if you turn the page, he goes, ah, I've entered a deadly time paradox, and it's taking the form of a pair of giant four-dimensional scissors. <laughs> They're slicing me in twain. Oh, the agony, the irony, the sheer realism. Other comics offer 3D special effects, but this is the only comic that uses actual 3D objects from your own home. Unless Gwenpool's beaten us to it. I hate her. <laughs> anyway, all oh. the humanity sliced up by time itself. Not even my healing patch can bring back from this, folks. My adventure ends here. Wow. Amazing. You are Deadpool. So, uh, any, any last pitches before we No, we've got, to wrap, we've, we've got, got to, wrap. to wrap it up. Don't assume that Comic-Con cosplayers are everything about Deadpool. Read it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, what are we talking about next week? Do we, do we remember? Do we know? Is it I, Michelle? I think it is. It might be. And I, I know that you're behind the counter, and I think that it is. So, you know how we're always talking about how someday we're going to do European comics? That sometime is next week. Uh, so we, be we will be judging us from off screen as we finally <laughs> cross the pond uh, to get into some bande dessinée, uh, some fun. British comics, um, some all around good stuff with our own Michelle Hoffman. Uh, and that's been our show. So thank you for joining us on our Deadpool Spectacular. Hopefully Koi did not exhaust you too much. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's exhausted. I'm exhausted. Stay tuned for our next program because we're going into uh, ways after this. If I, weave. It's weave. Weave. It's like, like driving home on ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little exhausted. Watch out for the side streets on weave. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> weave is like... coming up, and that's been our show. Thanks Yay. for joining us, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Yay. Spin the Wednesday Club. Yay. Mm. Thank you, Koi. Thank Yay. You, Yay. I love you, Amy and Talos. Oh, my God. Oh, are we still on? Yeah, uh, find yeah. me on Twitter and Instagram at C O Y J A N D R E A U. Thank you. Uh, I